Together we have clarity, direction, and success way beyond what we ever previously thought possible. Here's your host, Frankie Lee. Welcome back to the Frankie Lee Podcast. And today we have something epic for you guys because we have not one, but two legends. The Turkish legend and the Vanilla Slice himself. Yes. Mr. James Smith PT, Diron Cartel. Let's go. What's going on? How are you, boys? I'm good, man. It's nice to be here. Thank you for the setup. The setup Mate, is... It's decent, isn't it? I might need to use your skills soon, Frankie, to get the PT taken off my name on the internet. Yeah, mate, <laughs> um, when you want the James Smith account, the, the legit James Smith account, don't worry about it. We've got it sorted. Nice. Is it too early to say to go for a piss break? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're straight in there, really. You're straight in there. I knew you'd throw me straight under the bus, man. No, thank you very much for yeah. having us on. No, nah, mate, it's, it's it's an absolute pleasure, boys. I've been waiting for this day to, to get you boys both on here together. So, Sick. you know, I, thought, you. I thought it was going to happen separately. I thought it might not happen at all, but you're both here. You both arrived. You're safe and well. You've done a radio show this morning. You should be on good form, especially you, Darren. I'm expecting big things from you. Yeah, bruv. I just, <laughs> you know what? I don't, I was talking to you about just in general, like when we're prepping for the show. We don't plan anything, do we? We uh, literally do day by day. And you'll notice from the organization with the group chat that we had. We don't need. We agreed. (laughs) Don't reply. The morning of, we're like, what's what's that address again? Yeah, Uh, yeah, yeah. But we did it when we were down there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Can I just say, I'd appreciate if you didn't mention the address on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> the address is. <laughs> no, because I, I just don't want any uh, government agencies following no, me up. No, 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 no. You're right, you're right. <laughs> Boys, I think the first time that I remember of you guys, seeing you guys together and obviously vibing, obviously you were back in Sydney, but you, you left shortly after that and you went off to, I think it was Bali at the time. And I remember watching a live of you two in a in swimming pool in this like backpacker's place. And you were both just loving life, vibing, and, and obviously just doing your fitness kind of content, right? Yeah. Did, at that point, right, before all this, obviously now we're going on tour and everything like that, at that point, did you ever think like you would be here, like where you are right now, in terms of like the level you've at so fast? Because three, cause three or four years is fast to get to this level. I... I feel like James was on his, like, he was kind of, it was happening for him sort of thing. And in my head, I always had the mentality of, it's going to happen. Do you know what I mean? I could kind of see something mad happening with us two doing stuff together and just growing in our own way, but also, like, supporting each other. I kind of saw it happen, but I didn't expect it to the extent that the things happened when we landed back in the UK. Because it went from me not having any idea to someone messaging me from the UK going, Darren, I'm sitting on a bus. I wasn't even on 10,000 like, followers on Instagram going, I can see someone watching your story. And I'm thinking, that's pretty mental. Do you know what I mean? And I knew we were going to go places, but not that quick, like you said. For me, it was like, um, imagine I've turned up to like a blackjack table and I've gone, I'm only going to bet with 20 quid. And I've turned it into 25. And I look around and I'm going, oh, that's pretty sick. And then I'm like, cool. And I play again, 35. And I play again, and I'm at 40. And people come over like, what are you doing? I'm like, got some good luck at this table. And for me, it was it was never like turning around and going, boys, I'm going to be rich soon. It was like, I'm literally just playing every game until it goes wrong. And, and people said to me like, oh, you're really consistent with your work. And I was always saying, oh, the table's hot. And I've just literally felt that way for three three years where as long as what I put in, I'm getting a return on my chips, I'm just turning up to the table every day. And that's the only way I see it. So I never forecasted things to be big. And then for me, like, you know, when a book deal comes along or anything like that, it's like just another play of hand. And I'm like, oh, sick. That roll of the dice was good. Um, so we're very, I would speak on behalf of both of us, we're very short-sighted with anything. We're just looking to put our chips down and walk away with more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, yeah. and that's, that, literally I got my blinkers on. People go, oh, what's your three-year goal? I'm like, yo, boss man, I've, I've only got one more spin yeah. at the table. Ask me again after that. I mean, how many people do you know though, back from where we're from, like in the UK, especially, I think, I think we, you could probably resonate from this, but how many people do you know that are not willing to put their chips in? Like, like even, like even to, you're talking about putting all your chips in and just seeing what, seeing how, how the cards land. But there's so many people out there that don't put any of their chips in. Like, they're, they're, and they're just, they're just coasting through. Yes, I would, what, what I'll say about that, you know when you just said the table's hot, I think we create the table, he created yeah. the table and he's chipping in, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't think you, 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 catch a, you catch a chance or something like that, you create it. When I first met Smith, I created that opportunity to go and ask him and say, big man, 
how did you start online PT when he only had a few thousand followers on Facebook? I yeah. created that table for myself yeah, yeah, as yeah. he did. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And I think people are too worried about taking risks and go for the option of being really safe. And you kind of can't blame them, but I guess what you realize is when you always play the safe card, I don't think greatness happens with that. Consi- greatness happens from consistency, but you also got to take an element of risk as well. Obviously being smart with it, but... I remember early on, I've, there's been a few times where my first risk was leaving the UK. And I said to people like, look, if I can build a business here, I can do it in Australia. Got to Australia, turns out I couldn't. So then I went online. But then when I went online, I built a good business. And like where one door was closed, I was like, oh, I best try this. And you boxing coach, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Imagine you've gone in, you're like, I'm going to go left, right, right, left, right, right. You've been practicing that the whole time. So then suddenly the, the they're not getting changes. through. You're yeah. like, whoa, I might have to go for the body now. So for me, when I got to Australia, I tried to set up a business. I wasn't happy for loads of reasons. So I was like, right, I need to do something else. Then I got into online PT. And again, things started kicking off. But I came to this crossroads where I was probably, no, I was, I was doing about a thousand Aussie dollars a day with no business partner, no structure. I was like winging it on, on that front. And then I started building the academy and I knew the academy was the best thing moving forward. But my business partner who I set up the academy with said, you've got to drop all your online PT clients today. I was like, what? A thousand dollars a day. I, I was pretty much set for life. And he goes, I need you to drop that to put everything into the academy. And that was a bold move. And I had to message all my clients that were paying me $120 a week and say, yo, you, you need to move on top. And you were averaging a thousand dollars a week, like seven days a week. So you're talking 365. Yeah. A year. Yeah. And I had no accountants at this point. So when I told accountants, they were like, you're an idiot. You need to set up a business. I was doing this through a sole trader business account. So I couldn't, I wasn't even expensing stuff. Fucking hell. So I was the racking tax up. man was loving you. Yeah, I got bummed by him pretty good. And then it got to another point. Six months down the line in the academy, I was like, that's the best decision I've ever made. But I remember sitting down with Darren. We are in uh, George Street Fitness First, and he's at the crossroads where he was. you were working so many hours with your clients that were paying you. Yes. I, said, I said to him, I was like, bro, you, you're not going to be able to go online unless you ditch 90% of your income. And yeah. he was working for me at the time in the academy, which I was incredibly grateful for. But I had to sit down with Darren and go, yo, I need you to park your bread and butter, take a 75% pay cut and come work with me. But, and and yeah. he did it. And I, I, knew, I knew that was going to happen because I was actually, because le- what happened was when they set the JSA up, I became like the head coach. I was like the first yeah, yeah, coach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was there from like the beginning and I saw how everything happened. If anything, I kind of saw the process of how I saw them making mistakes of as well as them winning. So I kind of yeah. learned bits from both my me- best mates that were partners. Yeah. And uh, from that, remember the time I was like, I'm, I'm leaving Australia, brother. End of summer, I'm leaving no matter what. It was is like it, the perfect it, it, opportunity. Is this when you were, were obviously with this girl? Yeah, my, yeah, yeah, yeah. When I broke it off with some, uh, no, uh, with some Aussie bird, that sounds rude. Not some Aussie bird, my ex. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want a word going around. People the word think- you're looking for is Beyonce. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to yeah. mention it. No, no, it's fine. I don't care. I don't mind talking yeah. about it. But it's, because um, you know sometimes when people like, when you say that, it's like, they don't come on, man. It's not really the toughest thing you went through. But at that point, it was. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? Yeah, because I, I, yeah. I don't doubt she was probably a like, nice looking thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. For 100%. So, so even though she's probably fucking annoying the shit out of you, you've pretty, it's pretty hard to walk it wasn't, away. It wasn't even that. It, it was it was two it was like two comets going through space. I'm not talking I'm not talking. Oh, but I'm they're like, both going in different directions. They just start going in different directions. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I saw I potential in doing a madness. I yeah. always have since I was yeah. a kid. I've always wanted like whether it was I want to be a footballer or this or that, I always yeah, wanted yeah. to like do something cool. Do you know she I mean? wanted you married with three kids and she a house. W- she wanted uh, no offense to any Aussies listening to this, like the typical suburbia lifestyle, yeah. dropping kids off to school. And I couldn't think of anything worse in my life. The thought of that is actually depressing to me at the minute for now. Yeah, yeah. Because I'll come from. You're not ready for it. Yeah. No, nah, I'm not ready for it. Number one, and I come from such a crazy city like London. Yeah. yeah. To go in somewhere like that. So when the option came. When I was talking to the boys, you don't need you don't need kids because you've got cousins. I've got enough cousins, bro. <laughs> Probably got kids somewhere. You know what I mean, hundred <laughs> k in Ibiza. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, like when he when he started doing that, it's, it is an incredible risk. And like I'm, I know for a fact that people would have chatted shit behind his back at his work. 
and gone because when yeah. we used to record videos in the gym the early days academy content was us two with the dslr in the yoga studio of our gym yeah yeah i remember yeah and fitness pe- first yeah, sydney yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah people were like what the fuck are these boys doing and i know that Durham was getting shit they were like why are you why are you hanging out with that waistband because i wasn't too popular in that gym i didn't really ever get above six hours a week it, by the time i got six hours a week i didn't want to be in there yeah but I've, you know what they they definitely disliked him Way more than me, but that was only because. <laughs> no, they did. No, no, no. Only because. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Only because yeah. I take time to get to know someone. Number one and number yeah. two, Smith actually didn't spend much time with them because he wasn't yeah, there. Yeah, because he's on long. his own lane, so they don't get it. And usually, what happens is people don't like. This is wrong, but people like to hate on people that are winning or and and a different of and a different exactly. So. Whereas I saw both parties very well. I took my minute or whatever to get to know Smith and understood why he is the way he is. And he wasn't even doing anything wrong. I was doing the exact same thing, but I was just a bit more subtle when, say, like, uh, going and talking to someone else's client. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But then, yeah, go on. Yeah, I was motivated. Yeah, you were I motivated. I, my first morning, I was hungover to fuck. And I, <laughs> I was in there at 6 a.m. chatting. To, I was like, I'm chatting to everyone. And that rubbed the PTs ever way. They were like, who the fuck is this guy? Before I'd even said hello, 20 PTs, I'm in yeah, there chatting yeah, to their clients. Yeah, 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 I, yeah. I saw that as, this guy wants to be liked by everyone. That's how I saw it. As in like, he wants to fit in sort of thing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and I, he was talking to my client and I can see it, my client's looking at me. And I'm yeah. like, let him do his thing, bruv. If he does it good enough and he takes my client, then he fucking deserves it. I, I don't want it. Yeah, do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But most you've got people, a different attitude towards it. Yeah, I've got it, a yeah. different attitude and... Uh, I, I know I'm a good personal trainer. I don't need to worry you, about you, you my got, client. You, you know what you are inside, so you don't need to worry about what anyone else is. I don't need to worry about yeah, yeah. what certain person thinks or him going for my client or anyone else, yeah. which is why it's another thing where so many people are like worrying too much about other people than concentrating on what they're good at. Do you know what I mean? Like same in relationships. Yeah. People are like, who the fuck are you talking to? Like if I'm dating a girl and the guy's like trying to hit her up, I'm like, hey, good luck, man. And if he wins, cool. If she has a better time with him, yeah, yeah, and yeah. I don't really want to be with her. Good luck. Yeah, good, good, good luck. <laughs> good, good luck. Good, good, good luck. Because um, got some stamina in him. <laughs> <laughs> it is just one of those things, and yeah. they were hugely insecure. And you know, I, I was still the same dickhead who would get his tripod out in front of everyone. They would all be sitting eating breakfast at nine a.m. Nine a.m. is uh, maybe eight a.m. Eight a.m. is a dead time in the gym. Everyone's going work. Yeah, yeah. I put a tripod up. That's nine a.m. Uh, Which 9 tripod are we talking about? Same tripod I got on me now. <laughs> no, I, I get the tripod out. Bang. I'd be like, it's 9 p.m. in the UK. And I remember Darren come around once and I had like 800 people watching. Yeah, that's And he mad. was like, rah. Yeah, I was like, yeah. I just <laughs> jumped in. I was like, yo, Darren Cartel, what's going on? Like, just yeah, saying yeah, whatever. Yeah. And because I just thought I was fucking rate that, bro. Just setting up even, a even, even now when you think about it, 800 people is a fucking lot of people. If you put 800 people yeah. in a room, you know about it. It might have not been that much, you know. Uh, Maybe, yeah, but it was, it was good. Uh, whatever it was. Actually, it might have been 80. No, bruv, it might. I don't even think it was that, bruv. I remember 40, 50, but whatever it, it was, even, it was even, a high even, number for that period of time. Even you know to get I mean? 40 or 50 people that are highly engaged with your content as, a, yeah. as an online personal trainer, let's just put it in online personal training world. Yeah. Like, it's not hard to get 5% or, or 10% of that audience. Yeah. So you're talking about 5 or 10 yeah. people here. Yeah. To, or, you know. What, what, to, I, what I think banged for Smith the most is not even the fact that I don't even think you were one of the first that was doing online PT. There was, I know there was a lot of people in the States doing all this stuff, but I think he was one of the first doing live Q&As. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah which yeah. is why I think it, he's... And, and the, so the honesty, the honesty. Yeah. Like, and, and people yeah. wouldn't see it. And I'm like, how many... Someone asked me, how many people has he got live? That I said, I was like 40, 50 people live, bruv. And people were like, oh, is that, that's not that much. I'm like, brother, you fucking stupid, bruv. Your client barely listens to you. <laughs> when you're training them, he's got 40, 50 people on a Facebook engaging with him. He's pretty much talking to himself. I'm like, do you not Hold see on, the guys. I just want to pin my link. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I remember. And then um, I remember at this point when I just started at the gym, uh, I was fucked when I first got to a bit of background. When I came here traveling, spent all my savings, went home, came back on an Air China flight. And when I got to Sydney, I was supposed to start on the 23rd of Jan 2017. And fitness first, like, oh, sorry, your paper didn't come through. You're starting 23rd of Feb. Fucking hell. And I was like, well, cheers. I literally thought to myself, I could have lived with my mum and dad for an extra month. And I was paying rent. Um, now I'm living in Sydney. I was living in Manly at the time. I went to Opera Bar to see if I could get a job working behind the bar. So I didn't have any money. So I'm asking for like, what, $10 an hour? And I went there and they were like, have you got your RSA? I went, what's that? And they were like, you need your qualification to serve alcohol. I went, I worked in a pub in the UK. And I remember... Went to Opera Bar, applied for a job behind the bar. Was going to get it without going on this course? 
And on the ferry on the way back, I was listening to uh, Tools of the Titans by Tim Ferriss. Never finished it. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you can't finish that book. It's 1,700 pages long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, there was a bit in it where he was like, uh, uh, you know, there was something, I think it was about the gun to the mentality. When I got home, I tapped up all my clients for referrals and I built out the referrals. And then by the time I started Fitness First, I went from applying for a job at Opera Bar to when I met Duran, I was doing $1,000 a week online. And he goes, the fuck are you doing? That's what I said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't even know. Him. It, yeah, he doesn't know me. That's hey, why. Hey, 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 was it like the time you remember in the Wolf of Wall Street yeah. where he's in? Where he's show in, me your paycheck. Yeah, show me your paycheck. Yeah, 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 show yeah. me your paycheck, and I quit my job. Yeah, yeah. I, it, it was similar. It was like I was like, "Why are you here, bro? Why yeah, are yeah. you here?" And I guess like I don't. Know, I've realized when when I came to Australia. He, do you know why he was there? He was there to take you away from this chick maybe. that was bad for you. Maybe, maybe, yeah. <laughs> but you know what I realized? What I realized, like. um maybe culturally or socially some things that I was never really aware of I do now is yeah. I would ask too many questions yeah so like maybe when people were like they wouldn't ask how someone would do something like how did you start online I was asking bare questions how much you make yeah how, that's how, how, many on, how, many, how many how many online clients you got yeah. how, how much you how do you do that yeah. do you know what I mean maybe I was a bit but which is why I guess I'm in the position I am now which is whereas now if I ask a question but I had to do that initially to learn a few things from him and a few others, but then solve things for myself. Like I wouldn't go to him now and go, what are you doing with JSA next week? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's really like understanding the tools. Like it's similar to people don't realize they have systems to get laid and people that get a lot of sex <laughs> have good systems. And you know, yeah. James it's, Clear. It's numbers though. It's numbers as well. It's, yeah. it's numbers, but also systems. Because yeah, you've yeah got to, you, you, if you're gonna if you're gonna get laid that much, you have to have a strategic plan of what pipeline you're running them through. I'm, I'm mate Ferris. I'm sure he talks to loads of girls, but he shags none of them. So like, his, yeah. you know, his numbers part is is probably good. But like, as far as online, uh, Ferris is too nice though. Yeah, he is too nice, mate. He is too nice. Like he he he, he takes them for meals too quick. Yeah, he do, mate, and I don't I don't know him, but that he just looks like the guy that takes a girl for a meal too quick. Holy moly. Well, he, holy, yeah, but holy moly, can get expensive when you're doing six of them a week. You know what? <laughs> you know what Ferris needs to do one day. It might even be me. He might just have to clock a guy in the face and be like, "No, I'm not having this anymore." <laughs> I'll, I'll be the guy. You know what? I'll respect it. <laughs> back, back he, to- he, 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 can I just say something on, on Ferris? Uh, and I, and I, li- I like the guy, right? But I always remember he used to he used to like take out your girlfriend for like coffee dates, didn't he? Like, at the doesn't time. have everyone's girlfriend. I'm like, mate, what are you doing? Very easy. <laughs> we got a girl first, poor guy. Systems. So, like, I always say to people, like, if you if you want to get laid, you've got to first of all talk to people. Two, take them uh, physical contact. Whether it's going for not like that, but take them on a date, go for a walk, go for a sip and see. Whatever it is, do that. Then from there, you need to have some form of clothes, and then from there, you end up having sex. But like with PT, a lot of people don't realize the systems between having a social media presence and making clients. So Duran was like Duran appreciated he didn't understand the systems so he, then he signed up to my emails without me knowing so then yeah. by the time he asked me how I did it I said I send these emails he goes I know and he was already reading them and I then I had to correlate to him I said this is me asking someone to come to the bedroom this is me asking them if they want to go for a date this is how I get in front of people and even yeah, now yeah, people yeah. are very they're like oh my god how much does Instagram pay you and you're like they don't yeah. pay you anything if anything Instagram take your money and usually yeah, yeah, it's like yeah, a little yeah. Yeah. You, you, are, you are a data bank for them so the fastest thing that, that you understand but a lot of uh, other influencers or people on Instagram don't understand you please not call us influencers no not you I said not oh, you no, I said right, other, I did say that can I just clarify yeah, you said that. can you clar- yeah you clar- he, he's that. clarified he's clarified <laughs> but, but, but a lot of people don't understand this right it's your job to take your following and get them onto your email list so you own that customer. And like, obviously, Paul Moore, I've, I, I, I didn't implement Paul Moore's email system into my business because it wasn't right for what I was doing at the time. But I, I appreciate, I went through his whole thing and I know you boys have been through his like email yeah. domination academy or whatever it was called back then. Yeah. But that process where you email him every day, you talk to him about picking up your washing in wherever you are in America and it's cost you $400 and then you ask them you put a call to action at the end of the email where you say oh and by the way sign up to JSA and, uh, and I'll be your PT it's like yeah. it's that, that sounds so foreign to a lot of people but it's so that that is the driver of your business isn't it like your your business is driven by emails yeah, yeah 100% I mean uh, I always say to people like if you will try and sell to people on social media you're in a crowded room and people don't just read their emails like let's say you know, we're at breakfast and you go for a pee. 
we're going to check our socials. We're not going to check our emails. I checked my emails, full attention, sat down, laptop open. Usually my wallet's in my pocket or by my side, or I've got my backpack with all my credit cards in. So, you know, if I need to pay for something, when I pay off my credit card, it's always from my email reminder. My yep. email reminder from Amex, payment due. I get and do my admin. If I then get a message from a service like, you know, um, 20% off flights, flight center, whatever, you're going to do it all in that go. Never have I bought anything off social media. And there's also a despondent kind of element of lack of trust there as well. Even now, like looking at my phone, I've got 17 emails. I didn't get a chance to reply to them uh, this morning. Yep. I'm, I don't want to, I don't want to open them on my phone because I want to pay full attention to it like you said. Yeah. yeah, yeah I yeah. think it's such a powerful tool and like when I first started doing it I saw it uh through him and then he told me about Paul Mort. I jumped onto Paul Mort and I'm shit at writing, reading, spelling like fucking awful. And if I can generate some money But you don't have to the thing, the thing about these emails that you're writing you don't have to write perfect gr- gr- grammar but because, yeah. because it's because they're meant to sound like you are talking to them but exactly that's right but what i'm trying to say is that people hold back on a lot of things because they believe that they're not say good enough for it whereas at the time i would probably not be good enough to most people's standards but i just kept doing it until i got better yeah, yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. Be like performance in bed <laughs> <laughs> this guy cannot talk about mate, that mate, <laughs> mate, mate. can i just say what well, 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 just to pivot off email did your ex bird steal your phone? Yeah, she did. Yeah, please put this snippet on <clears throat> social media. Uh, what? 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 what, what walk me through this. Walk me through this. Not to mention names, but McKenna. <laughs> um, so I, I, every time, I always, whenever there's a new iPhone, I always just get a new iPhone. So I've always got these like spare iPhones. Cam, my housemate, is currently using my iPhone 12. I wanted to try a smaller size. Hated it. Cool, he's got that. Willits, I'm pretty sure, uh, was using mild iPhone 10 my phone 11 plus beforehand uh you know uh, lana a girl i was seeing before that i'm a laptop my old laptop my old macbook pro so i got that oh, no. back i had to text her and threaten to report it stolen for it to get back and we'd broken up at this point and then she goes my laptop's broken i said look even though we've broken up borrow my macbook pro you can borrow it just give it back she fucks off back to dubai and i'm like where's my laptop my friend's saying did you get your laptop back i'm like nah so then with mckenna uh again I lent her a Garmin, an iPhone, like all this stuff. Because I was saying, oh, I don't use it. You can use it. <clears throat> so when we break up, I'm like, oh, yo, can I get that back? She's like, yeah, I need to get a new phone. I'm like, cool. Month later, I'm like, yo, can I get that back? She now doesn't respond to any of my messages. So then I use my, unfortunately, I blocked me on my Instagram. So I got my James Smith Academy Instagram message her. They're all being seen within minutes. Yeah. She's just ignoring me. What, what, Savage. What I, I, and, and, I'll just grab it off her if I see her on one now. And what, yeah. and what am I to do? <laughs> just grab it. <laughs> yeah, mate. I, I don't, mate, that's a big technology play that these girls are playing on you, you know? I know. I think the starting point would be maybe stop giving them away. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, and I, <laughs> so I, basically, when you start dating, you, give, you, you, you start by giving them a piece of technology as well. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just a generous person, but 99% yeah. of people in my life don't take advantage of my generous nature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, and if I ever feel that someone is... Like I, I clock it straight away. Like yeah, but she was Byron Bay, wasn't she? She was Byron Bay. Now she's uh, iPhone. <laughs> Bay. But like, um, we were we were yeah. reasonably probably weren't that amicable. But like, um, you know, I, I'm I'm a decent human being when I break up with someone. It's not like we're screaming at each other. I'm just like, yo, I don't want to do this anymore. And like, even that's get, probably it. Oh, yeah. you you broke up with her then? <laughs> yeah, and I said to her like, Let, let's we were falling out more and more. Like, we, we just. She, she can't disagree with that. She can't go, no, we won't. We were disagreeing on yeah, a lot. We're yeah, falling yeah. out all the time. And then it got to a point where I was like, yo, you know what? I got, I got a lot of work stuff going on. I even said to her, I was like, my best mate's coming out next month. I'm going on a, on a book tour where you have to be a very strong woman to put up with a man going on a fucking book tour. Yeah. Then I'm going back to the United Kingdom, potentially being locked out. <clears throat> I do not think this is a good idea. So that, yeah, that was a conversation. It's not like I, it's not like I said, yo, I want to fuck other girls. Yeah, but yeah. basically, what you just said was that. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I, don't, I don't even, th- I don't even think it's that. It's, it's yeah, it's just everyone's just got to do their own thing, and then if it comes together, it comes it, together. It, people can't it, rely there, which is yeah. my biggest issue. Hence, why I had to Ooh. take off is I don't like other people relying their happiness on me. Hundred percent. You know what I mean? Hundred percent. I'm gonna do my thing, just like like this. This is a relationship, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The only diff- the only I think the main reason it's good is because we don't have sex. Yeah, and you, yeah. you get what I mean. Yeah, you get so twin like, beds. I do my thing. I'm I'm gonna be happy with myself. He's happy with himself. When we bring our shit together, it's fun, and I think that's what it should be like with 
relation like hetero whatever relationships in general. Do yeah, you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Where whereas when there's pressure to keep people happy, it's just no one can ever like kind of evolve and grow on yeah, their the, own. Do you the, know what I mean? The reason why I wanted to bring the relationship up was because like a lot of people will put their their happiness into as as if it's your responsibility to deliver their happiness. I've had it a few times with girls that yeah. I've met in in Australia, Australian girls, and that, and it's always like that they expect me to bring my best best self to the table and bring all the energy and bring all the this that and the other. But then sometimes yeah. you can leave that conversation after you delivered all that drained as a man, like because you because yeah. you, you're because because we're all all three of us are trying to pursue big shit, so we haven't got time for fucking patting someone on the shoulder and saying, "Hey, I you know." I still like you, you know what I mean? But I think, you know what? I think the right person would be like, do your thing. Yeah. Winston yeah. Churchill said, the key to happy marriage is not talking to your wife before lunch. <laughs> Mate, that, that, is, that, is, that is a fair point. And we just drop the mic on I that. Could, I could have just made that yeah. up. But like, yeah. for, for me as well, like, uh, it's hard because if I've only dated someone in a few months, they want, them, they want themselves to be more important than my work. And they can't be at that point simply because my work is a constant variable. My relationships with my manager, my relationships with Darren, my relationships between my business partner and all the people within my businesses, even every single academy member, that's a constant variable. That is something that is a part of my life. Unfortunately, women, albeit how great they are or how terrible, are transient beings at this point. Right. If a woman establishes herself, in, and this isn't me saying women need to you know, you know, work extra hard or anything like that. I'm just saying that what, there are so many things in my life that are solid, and there are some parts that are interchangeable at the moment. When a woman comes into my life and it's only a few months in, I cannot prioritize her ahead of anything else because statistically speaking, she's probably going to last six months because that's the maturity I'm at at the moment. And it sounds like a horrible thing to say. It's not. It's just, but I'm, I'm stating the fact. Just, just a fact, yeah, yeah. And like what, what they really should do is try and appreciate me for what I do on a daily basis. Not to dance around me and to you know, like make my world amazing, but until it probably hits six months... I can't take that asset too too seriously because chances are they're going to implode with insecurities about three, four months in, which is a common occurring theme. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because my trajectory with where I want to be and where I'm going does not sit well with people. And after a while, the reason we argue is because you're going in different directions. Does, does it, do you ever find that um, with you guys that women will encourage you to pull back and not not strive for that bigger, bigger thing all the time? What, uh, as in for them? Yeah, do, do, no, like do, to, no, do, do you ever find like you'll cu- you'll come into a relation you'll have a relationship with a girl whether it be like um, you're you're just seeing them or whatever yeah. but then you're you're like telling them about all these big goals that you have and all these aspirations and I'm going on tour with Smith and, and yeah, you're yeah, saying yeah. Oh, I'm going on tour with Dylan and I'm fucking excited and then and then without them even knowing that they're doing it they're like oh yeah but yeah, and they start to pull you back yeah, sub, sub, yeah sub, subconsciously it's, pulling it's subtle, you back in sub, uh, so what did I say the other day I was uh, about sub, uh, uh, positively uh, negative or something no, like that no, 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 I, what were you was, saying um, was, was, I said it in an email actually I was like was subliminal messaging subliminal messages yeah, yeah, in yeah, the yeah, back yeah. end in the back end which and people know <laughs> people, people know they're doing it people know they're <laughs> saying it I think it's it's incredibly tough and I do empathise and I'm very sorry that I called a woman an asset for any feminist there but that is the way I see my life unfortunately I see myself as you know if someone goes take me for a swim in the morning before you look at your phone that's very difficult for me because the people on my phone are very important people in my life my family my management my friends now those people are probably going to be there in three years and the girl i'm dating isn't so i'm like no i need to look at my phone for a bit before we go for a swim and see like that's a that's a non-negotiable because if something's going if i need to put a fire out in the uk i'll do that but it's not that i think that social media she's obviously never had an app no, it's not, it's not even that. So girls, girls have never ever dated anyone quite in the, the what we do because if you think as a percentage of the human race, how many people are exposed to what we're exposed to where strangers know who you are. Like that, that's a very, very strange thing. And to have people sexually attracted to your partner who have never met them before is an incredibly weird thing. For us yeah. to then put out content where girls are getting excited, tagging their friends, going, we need to go out in Brisbane so we can find these guys is a very strange thing. So I empathize on behalf of all women where if I was dating, a, you know, if I was da- dating Margot Robbie and every time she posted, there were thousands of guys being like, I cannot wait to see you so I can grab you in the street or something like that. It wouldn't go the other way around. Yeah, but that yeah, is yeah, yeah. quite literally what women do comment on our stuff and I haven't got a problem with it. It must be incredibly hard. And also knowing that, say, Margot Robbie was going to go to an event full of thirsty guys, that would be incredibly difficult for a man to to deal with. And those insecurities tear apart 
your daily relationships. I think another thing about that is that if that happened with, say, if I was dating Margot Robbie, I would get it. I would get it. Yeah, yeah, you get yeah. it to a point where you get it. I think you'd be willing to take it for yeah, Margot Robbie. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. But it's also um, she's from the Gold Coast, by yeah. the way. But uh, yeah. Oh, she is, right? Yeah, legit, yeah, legit. Legit. Why she, why, yeah. She, she, her family live in Burley. Oh, so uh, yeah. BRB. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But um, what I'm trying to say is that I think, um, I think personally me, I'm going places, but I'm still not kind of there, there. But yeah, even yeah. if I was, I know for a fact that I'm always still going to maintain very normal and I, you will as well. Yeah. So when you chat, so when you're out and you're chatting to a girl or whatever and you're very normal and they see you as very normal but they don't see the other side which is fucking crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't expect that until it happens and then they get a big shock. So in essence, we're too nice. <laughs> do, do you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you get what I'm trying to say? It's difficult as well because you say like you get it and I get to a point in relationships where the majority of the conversation is putting out fires surrounding insecurities. Yeah. And then issues arise. And I'm like, this is only arising because of what I do for a living. And this has even happened recently where I'm like, it's not pleasant when the only conversations you're having with people is them saying, are you sure you don't want to be single on your book tour? And like, that's coming from a place where people are literally in a, in a place of chaos. And after a while, you literally... I don't, I don't even think that should be a conversation. It, and it shouldn't, it shouldn't. Because be who, who, who's, who's asking you that, this chick? Nah. People uh, in general. Just people, people in general. general. So yeah. Say, I'm, yeah, yeah, say yeah. I'm seeing someone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. The friends of friends yeah. will ask your friends of yeah. their friends. Yeah, 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 and yeah. the mad thing is that the other friends secretly want you to... <laughs> yeah. So they, imagine, imagine you know this. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, date, you. I'm dating someone. An issue comes out of nowhere. Who have you been speaking to? Oh, my friends. My friends are saying that there's no way you're not fucking girls at your events. There's no way that you and your best yeah, friend are Yeah, yeah, so they're putting that insecurity and they're, they're trying to plan yeah, it on who you. Who the fuck is your friend and do they even yeah. know me? Yeah, but they're yeah. probably doing it from a place of protecting their friend, right? Yeah. But this this happened again with Lana where um, she's like, oh, well, these boys at this party said this. And I'm like, you're letting someone you met at a party that you don't know get between me that you do know. That's not fair on me. And I was like, how can a random person's opinion affect our relationship and when they let it affect your relationship it makes things incredibly difficult but this is the this is the caveat point that's really important i care about my work a lot more than most things in my life i i love my work my work keeps me happy my work keeps me sane my work protects my family as they get older and it protects my younger family like now i've got a nephew i'm now an uncle my work looks after so many people outside my life and that makes me happy. Right, yeah. When you're struggling with relationships, I will take it. And if I continue through my life having incredibly dysfunctional relationships, for me, that's a net win. And I will happily ride that through, even if I ended up having you know, a very dysfunctional love life my whole life. To know how many people my work benefits, I would take that. When people want me to give up on my pursuits, my passions, my work life and positively affecting the family around me to have a functional relationship with them it doesn't sit well with me and I probably do need to talk to a therapist about that well Dimon is a therapist but do like you? no I think I think I think I mean? at the end of the day I think you just know what you will and won't accept in your life yeah and there's there's that is powerful shit because once you are in that place as a man, I feel like that empowers you to go and do so much more. It's, when you have those conversations where like you know what you want and all that stuff when someone's like were well, you doing this you're like no yeah. yeah, they get yeah. shocked because they're like, "Yeah, fuck, I've never, oh, no one's ever said that before." It's very so, interesting at the moment. I'm getting into Jordan Peterson's work. Yeah, I know, I know. I saw you getting some hate on that, and I've met Jordan Peterson. Have you? Have you? Yeah, yeah, I've met Jordan Peterson, and I had a a sit down with him for 20 minutes oh, after sick. after one of his shows. He's a sick guy, really articulate. I don't know why people hate on him so much because actually, what he's saying isn't isn't t- he's not trying to go out and and tell all these women that all these feminist women that they're all shit do you know what I mean like he's not yeah. trying to push that in their face they just don't listen to the context of what he's saying if you actually listen to the full context of what he's saying what he's trying to articulate yeah. he's not pushing the buttons that they think he's pushing they create straw man arguments against him and one thing that was very important that he said he goes men are not in pursuit of power and it is not about a patriarchal system where men go we hold the power we're the man the woman does what we say that's not it a lot of people including women misinterpret an ingrained primal instinct for men to be successful and men want to be successful 
partly me myself so that I can provide for a family and people in it that doesn't mean I'm better than my wife it doesn't mean that socially I should be accepted higher than her it means that you want to be the best I want to be the best I'm competitive I want to you want to be the best James Smith that you can be yeah and if I was in the jungle I'd be beating my chest after every victory and like I I want to do that and it really annoys me when people misinterpret that and even though I can be in a dysfunctional relationship and a dysfunctional you know uh, balance of power it's not about power to me. It's about success. It's about the conversations I have with my family and my friends, not about being the better one in a relationship. And it's, it is really annoying that that can be skewed and misinterpreted because... You just want to be the best in general. You, yeah. you just play the sport. I'm competitive. We're competitive in a healthy yeah, yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you want to be the best in your own lane. Do you know what I mean? And, and, and that's the beauty of success though because ses- success is different to different people. Yeah. So it's like your version of success might be, you know, got being 45 years old in London having an apartment that's uh, three miles down from your family because yeah, you're yeah. close to your family yeah? yeah your version of success might be having a dog walking down the beach no. at Bur- and, a, and a house at Burley Heads right and my version of success might be having my home in England and having one home here and, and yeah. living four months there and three months it and that's and that's that's great because we've all got different versions of success but people try and measure you off whatever their version of success is that's and that and point. that is yeah. where the fucking problem lies yes. because that that if their version of success is I want to work 50 hours a week in London earn 35 grand a year have a BMW 3 Series on the drive and have a free bed house semi <laughs> London right? Underground if, yeah. if that's if, and, and a season ticket on the Underground for 9 grand a year if that is your version of success and he looks at you and thinks well fucking hell like what's he what, why is he on why is he why is he chatting about dogs on social media like what's that and they'll hate on you for that because that, that doesn't fit in with their narrative of what they've been taught and how they've been brought up exactly. it, doesn't, it doesn't mean it's fucking right or wrong you which know what I mean? Which is why everyone has to do their own thing. And I remember I was trying to, um, when like all this online PT stuff started happening and like, started doing okay, yeah. I was trying to get all my boys in the ends, be like, bruv, you need to, listen, bruv, let me help you, they're PTs. Yeah, let like me Ali help and you. that. Yeah, Ali, cool, Ali does his own thing. Yeah. But there's other boys where I'm like, bruv, just stop that and start doing this. This is going to be better come for to you a talk. long term. Yeah, come to a talk. Come to a B2B, I'm yeah. forcing some of my friends, bro, for a talk that we charge three, four hundred pounds for. I'm like saying, come for free, bruv. You're going to make more money when you come and listen. They to come. What we, they don't come. And I'm, but if and they did, let me just, let me just say something before you continue yeah, with that. Yeah. If they didn't pay, mate, they wouldn't fucking listen. But yeah, exactly. But it's I, fact. I, I, that's true. A but couple guys close came. Friends. The Chris and the other guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big Mike, Mike. Big Mike. They came. And afterwards, they came behind and they were like, you've blown my mind. Yeah, and they were f- and they started posting on socials and this and that. Yeah, but so, then- so they actually got something out of it and they've actually earned money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I agree yeah, with yeah, you yeah, on yeah. that standpoint. The people that want stuff for free won't value it. But yeah. these guys, what, what we had done was they, they weren't sure what they were coming for. And afterwards, even just one point they took away, they're like, yeah. you've blown my mind. But the thing is, like, for example, if, they, if they, someone doesn't pay, they don't see the value. I understand that. But say if you thought, I'm close with you, yeah? If you saw that I was missing out on something, you would nudge me, right? Yeah. So even though I nudge, yeah. one of my other friends was like, Darren, just fucking stop. He was like, not everyone can w- ride your wave. You just got to l- just let people go. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, you know what? You can't save the world, man. I, I fuck it. I'm just doing my own thing now. And I think yeah. people need to just concentrate on that like the most. I, and, and I've found that too. Like, you know how when you move to Australia and everyone goes, oh my God, how did you do that? And I'm like, Book ticket, got on <laughs> yeah, plane, yeah. flew here, found out where to get a fucking ABN, got a job. Yeah. And they're like, it can't be that simple. And I'm like, it fucking is that simple. Like I flew, you flew Air China, I flew Air Philippines or, or Air Malaysia or whatever the fuck it was, Air Philippines. Like you just do whatever you have to do to take yourself from the situation you don't fucking like and put yourself in a situation you potentially could like. You know what I mean? And there's not enough people willing to spend £500 to do it. But they're willing to spend £500 on trainers that they'll wear once every two months at yeah, s- yeah. some nightclub in London, yeah. which would blow what, my mind. What are the ones called with the big heels? Like the uh, or uh, Alexandra McQueen's. Yeah. They're, 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 not, they're, not, they're not good shoe, man. Uh, horrible. Yeah. Horrible they're, they're not. But you know like, I don't mind these off-whites that you got. Like, they're pretty sick. Like They are sick. Like, and I know yeah, you got but you know what? Even if they were dead, I don't care because he can do that. Because he's, he's kind he's of pay- got to a level. He's yeah. paying for them off passive cash flow, right? Which is fine. You can buy stuff like that off passive cash flow. He doesn't have to physically swap his time for the money, so it's yeah. fine for him to buy that, yeah. right? 
as long as it's from passive fucking yeah. cash flow. It pisses me off that people go and earn money, swap their time for money, and yeah. then buy off whites. You know, I don't even care if they do that. It's when they flip it to me and turn around. How did you do it? Why did you do it? And I go, hold on. Or it's all right for you. Yeah. First generation uh, immigrant who's hustled in a fitness first like anyone else. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's all right for you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? You're, you're yeah. still there having to interpret phone calls for his parents because they don't speak English to the point that really? people are trying yeah. to take his parents for a ride. And then there are people from privilege going, oh, it's all right for you. Just go, oh, it's yeah. all right for you to appear. Like really? he didn't do his time. Like he didn't. Yeah. And this is why it's cool because no one ever really knows your backstory. And do you know what I mean? And usually people are very quick to judge any sort of scenario. Yeah. But yeah. Do you know how many times I've had people be like, yeah, you got your whole following because of James. I'm like, okay, cool, bro. I don't care. Like, I don't care what you think. Do you yeah. know what I mean? But people will say, people will hate or say anything to make their self feel better. And when people say, come at me or him or you, if people do that, then you know what? If it made them feel better for that hot second, bruv, just say what you got to say. It's calm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I, I think if if people people are going to hate, they're going to hate anyway. Yeah, yeah. You may as well just fucking crack on with and what you're doing. Not gonna pay. Yeah, exactly. And that's and that's <laughs> and that's a great statement because like people who people who comment negative shit or like the girl that will comment on your picture about the size of your dick in a pair of budgie smugglers oh, yeah. right like chicks like that that she's never gonna be she's never a gonna client get she's never she, she's never gonna get she's never gonna get the swede anyway so what's the point sweet. do you know what I mean sweet. <laughs> <laughs> I, call, I call a swede a head but yeah, let's yeah. talk about the swede of the yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. well the yeah. eggplant or whatever you want to call it are you, are you, are you, he's doing it he's fucking doing it oh it's my days and we are back from our strategic toilet break. You all f- know, you all know, three of us. You know at the beginning when I said I need to pee? Yeah. yeah I wasn't you, joking. Bro. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I wasn't joking. I needed to, to be, pee. To be honest, when you, when you put your hand up, I was I was actually buzzed because I needed a piss too. Yeah, man. But I was just holding on because the conversation was flowing. Was, but yeah. do you know the funny thing is, right? Dear, you're, you're taking a pee, right, James? Yeah. And uh, Darren just looks at me in, in, outside the kitchen and he's like, bro, you've been showing some love for a long time. How do I yeah. know you? And I'm like, mate... So let me just give you a bit of a backstory into that, and I don't think James knows this either. So this will be this will so. be new for you as well, man. But um, when when you when you're obviously you had calorie fucking deficit, right? And obviously that was your thing, and you'd branded it the hashtag and everything like that, and everyone was on the bandwagon. Uh, a short while later, you created Neat Up Twenty Four Seven, right? Yeah. As a hashtag, and I was watching. Obviously, I'd followed you, both your journeys, and obviously yeah. you're both being successful and all that stuff. And I thought, fuck. I wonder if this guy's trademarked it and 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 got the dot com and all this other shit that I know because obviously I look after brands online and I'm thinking fuck I don't want this guy to to build this big fucking movement and get it taken off him right yeah. because I can see it happening before my fucking eyes right I can yeah. literally see it happening so what I did was I I fucking registered neatup 247com right and I messaged him and I said hey bro like I don't know if you you're aware but I, I need you to I've got the dot com for you I've already sorted it out. I've got the dot com. It's all in your DMs, bro. So you can. It's, it's the no, truth. No, I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, 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 I was I, next to him when this happened. Oh, yeah. I remember. Yeah. You remember this happening? Yeah, because um, he thought at first you were being dodgy. I said, but I you said, were showing love. Yeah. No, I was trying to protect. I was trying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I, no, I legit you, was trying to help him. At first, he he got me to read the messages. He was like, "Smith, is this guy trying to turn to me?" Because you know, some it. people buy your domains. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And sell them. No, no, no. I wanted to protect him from from that happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so I bought this. I bought the domain neat twenty four seven dot com. I said, bro, I'll transfer it. You in, all, I need you. To, I need you to set up a GoDaddy account. I need you to 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 tell me that this pin code. I'll transfer it over to you. I need, and then I wrote down on that message. I'm sure I said, I need you to register the trademark, the hashtag as a trademark. I said, I need you to register the logo as a trademark. And this is only me telling you this because I want you to protect your brand online, yeah. right? And and because I was paranoid as fuck because yeah. I'd seen it happen. So I look after a lot of influencers in the fitness industry anyway, and I was yeah. paranoid as fuck that. That you that you were open for this man, and then obviously like we we lost touch and this that, and the other, yeah. and then and then I knew, I, but we lost touch, right? So I knew you'd want to try and register it. Yeah. So I thought, fuck, I've, I I'll have to delete this domain and hope to fuck that he registers it, right? And I, no sooner had I deleted it, like a few days later, you registered it. Sounds like <gasps> raw. Sounds like raw. <laughs> sounds like sounds like sounds, yeah. like, sounds, like, sounds yeah. like it was a, a job for management. Yeah. Because yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. basically, when you sent that, I was, in my head, like. I'm not going to lie, bruv. I was not thinking about any of that stuff at the time. I was still like figuring out how to actually generate yeah, yeah. some cash flow to have some freedom. So yeah, yeah, yeah. All the meet up 24 stuff, all that stuff. And the first thing I saw was when you messaged that, I said, who's this snake? No offense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. My head just goes to that straight away because yeah. that has happened with other stuff, especially with 
this was happening during the time you know that uh, herbal lifestyle was popping off and things were going yeah, mad yeah yeah because yeah. we were atting everyone yeah boom yeah, board all that yeah. stuff and i was like who the fuck is this bro i was like no yeah. i just ignored it and then the only reason i saw a message recently because i saw the tick and i was like who's this and i read up conversation and i was like oh okay yeah and yeah, then it yeah, made yeah, sense yeah, to yeah, me yeah, yeah. but initially also, you don't look like a tech guy, bro. So I'm looking at your profile thinking, who's this guy living up in Gold Coast? And you, and I was like... Yeah, but I, I don't want to look like a tech guy. No, 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 it's good. <laughs> no, no, but it's good, it's good. But like, I didn't, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I guess it's also me being always kind of on my toes. Yeah. Doing yeah. skim reads a lot. And like, yeah, uh, don't lie, man. like I, I reckon he wor- he read every third word, and to him it looked like I was stealing from him. <laughs> Mate, well, this, this is it. But like, I remember, I remember him showing it to me, and I was like, "Now the guy's doing your favour. He's either the the nicest looking dodgy guy, or the dodgiest looking nice guy, because he's you'd gone out of your way to to like help him out." But like, uh, Duran does read between the lines. Like today, I'm standing passively aggressively next to him. I'm like, "We need to go. We need to go." And I was like, Duran. I got to be on radio in Gold Coast. He goes, ah, oh, it's in Gold Coast. I I'm know what's Durant. happening. I'm going on Gold Coast radio. He's like, ah, oh, confusing times. I, I know, but I was just saving time to finish my work. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know. But <laughs> I know. But with that, all I was thinking was the first point of contact was no conversation. So in my head, the first yeah, thing yeah, I think yeah, of was, yeah, like, yeah, I don't yeah. go out my way. We'd had, we, we, we'd, had, we'd had a few little... Bit, bit of banter but it was nothing 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 serious nothing and, too serious and then, I, and then I hit you with full serious yeah. I was like Darren I need exactly. to do this 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 and this and this and in my head I'm yeah. like I don't know I you like do, that. I, do you mate, get what I mean your yeah, intentions yeah, yeah. are good yeah. but at that point yeah. my intentions are like I don't care I don't know you like that yeah, you know yeah, what I mean yeah, yeah, and yeah. I'm not saying yeah. and, I, and I was like I, 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 was, I was sat there and I was sat at home at the time where I was living by the beach right and I was sat there and I thought to myself does this guy not understand like that I'm no. trying to fucking I'm trying to save his ass right now also <laughs> you need to understand as well at no. that time I'm just thinking about <laughs> at this point I'm just trying to I'm just trying to uh, I'm being a personal trainer so all yeah. the IT all that sort of yeah. stuff I, I wouldn't and, you uh, wouldn't stress hey, about it because good, Shaw's doing it hey, or Luke's the, doing the it. good thing is he knows I'm legit now because he owns the domain name <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if, I was a, if I was a snake in the grass I'd still own it wouldn't no, I no but I know you're legit because yeah, yeah. I met you yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like some yeah. people's intentions can be really friendly for no reason. And not that you'd get something out of it with me, but I don't want to transfer no IP ting where I don't even understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, give yeah, you yeah. some next pin with an email and accidentally give you some shit because I'm not a yeah. tech savvy guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At that point, I yeah. didn't understand. And, and, anyway. and because I knew you weren't the tech savvy guy and I knew you were just a guy trying to do his best online, exactly. that's why I was trying to protect yeah, yeah, your yeah, ass. Yeah, 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 I, was, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was trying, yeah. I was trying to keep the food yeah. on your table so people didn't go and register. Brandon and go because yeah. I know what was going to happen. Someone's going to register neatup247.com, put a fucking Shopify store yeah. using your logo that you'd not trademarked and yeah. be trading as and and banking off your hashtag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? And hashtagging the products in the hashtags re- so that on the Instagram and people would click to buy from Instagram shop. You'd yeah, be yeah. fucked. Yeah, exactly. I know. And I know. then he'd, he'd sue you for selling your teas. Yeah. <laughs> and then, he, and then, he'd, then he'd, yeah, he could count sue you for nicking his trademark and using his trademark. Yeah. So, that, times. so that so that was that, all right. No, like, <laughs> it was all we love, all then, right. Then we'd, then we'd have to take it to different sort of strategies. <laughs> yeah, the, the, then then those guys, but, the Turkish guys from Taken, would come in. But keep in mind, from that scenario, yeah, yeah, yeah. which I knew, yeah, because I read the messages like a few weeks back. Cause yeah, you started kind of getting in touch. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. because right? because obviously I I done some work with uh, Luke and that yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, but then check this out. Then I went to get the Neat Up 24-7 page on Instagram. It was already taken. So what I did instead was I actually inboxed a person and someone did what you did and they just handed it over. Oh, really? Yeah. That's, that, that's good then. And that's how you learn. That, the, but that, but that's, that's, um, that's good because obviously that person was a, obviously a fan of yours that's done yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's great. That's great. Fan, that was good. I'm, that was good. Ju- I'm just glad it all worked out. So you yeah. can actually get the at James Smith. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, we'll, 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 we'll talk about that the podcast. Oh, amazing! Because the guy who had it before he's discontinued it. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, but so basically, that na- that na- is that name ghosted. Yeah. yeah. If the name's ghosted and it's not used, it, it's obtainable. So if if that does change in the next six months, you know, it's Frankie Lee. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, let's just um, One let's just time. sort it out. There's lots. There's lots of things that that, that I'll help you boys. I with. might Don't just worry. change my name to Trevor. Nah. Trev, Trev, Harry. Nah, 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 Harry. Nah, 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 nah. Harry Smith. Nah, nah. Nah, I'll change my surname to Sujik McLook. Sujik McLook. So then, why, so why don't you just be James Cartel? 
James Cosby. Uh, yeah. There's probably enough rumours that were gay yeah. as it is. Which is yeah, nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with it. Yeah, I like hey. the way you backed up there, bro. Even, even like, <laughs> hey, there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> <laughs> but like, no, I'm, I'm all for uh, it, but like, Dylan's yeah. like, look, if you really need PR, we can get married. And I'm like, uh, even though our parents no, are joking, straight, bro, I you, that, bro. If you were going <laughs> to get married, like, like, you know, in that relationship, like, who's the who's the dominant one? Bro, it will be a big fight, bro. Yeah, a big sword fight. Do you know what? I, I was listening to Joe, Joe, Rogan, <laughs> Joe Rogan talking about marriage, about how fucking yeah. stupid it is. Yeah. Like, it, like, like, and do you know what? All the things that I talk about in that book, which I say don't do. Yeah. Parents, so, oh, yeah. Let's just, let's just, um, do you want to, we, we, we are meant to be talking about, this is meant to be not oh. a book tour launch and uh, we've not even talked about no, no, it. No, fuck it. No, <laughs> no, no. It's, it's boring. But like, with, with, yeah. this, with this book, everything yeah. I talk about in there is actually disputing how my parents live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My yeah. mum and dad are each other's first girlfriend, boyfriend, married, yeah. and all that. But like, my mum and dad have been married 40 years too, bro. Yeah, and I was like, but I feel like it's a different generation. But yeah. imagine this, like, imagine me and Duran going, uh, Duran and I, imagine we're there at French, I go, bro, we need to make this official. And he goes, what? Bro, basically, we need to have a big party. Cost you like, I don't know, 20 grand. And we're going to stand there. We're going to go up an aisle in a church, even though neither of us believe in God. And we're going to stand there. We're going to look each other in the eyes and make this serious. And you go, you go, Smith, wait just yet. I get half of everything, Darren. And you go, what? Yeah. Yeah. Darren's like, yeah. Darren's like, like that, bro. Darren, Darren's <laughs> done the calculation. That. He's like, I'll half and nothing is nothing. So I'm sweet. <laughs> I'll, take, I'll take half that. <laughs> He's already got half his trader collection. He's got half your t shirts. <laughs> Darren's got more in his current account than I do. Um, yeah. But like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but like, but imagine that because he's got his trademark protected <laughs> anyway and, and basically you secure the friendship and you go this is a legal binding agreement until you die yeah, yeah. and you're like fuck me I don't yeah. know what I want for dinner how do I know what you're going to look like in five years exactly and then and then people change as well throughout their life and you know it, it's yeah. an interesting concept like marriage I can understand the safety of it from you know an old school way of looking at family life but fuck me it's pretty stupid isn't it like Dan Bilzerian although I think he's a bit of a fraud um, he says He's a professional gambler, which he's not. He's a trust fund baby. But he goes, I'm really? a professional gambler. And he goes, why would you double down half your assets for no no return? That's a fair point. Yeah. Yeah, he's got, like, he's got a point on that. All, all it is, all marriage is, is the legal binding belief system. Yeah. And once you do it, you lose he, half your assets. Your relationship doesn't change. Yeah, but, uh, you know the thing about marriage that kind of gets me is, is not that... It's not all that. It's the kind of like marriage was created on the back of a religion. That's, yeah, that's yeah, that, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. and the and if you look, if you read all religions, not just one, any of them, they're all outdated. Like, do you know what I mean? There was, there, I'll, I'll get married, but I'm not signing anything. Like, I, yeah. I'll just be like, "Hey, babe," and we're married. If I yeah, ever yeah, got yeah, married, yeah. it will be just to put a smile on the other person's face. And which, point, which which defeats the object of getting married then because that's not what you're about, is it? I just think, <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. Yeah. yeah, it's no, yeah. yeah. It is, yeah. But guess what? Most people do that. Yeah, that's mo- most, most people, people do. do. And, and Before, because it's what we should do. Do you know what, yeah. right? In, 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 in this book here, this one here, you should get it from all, and you can, I'll, put, I'll tag it in the comments as well if you've not got Thank it. Thank you for getting the limited edition one. Is this yeah, one signed by yeah, the author? This one's signed by the author, yeah. Do you know what this means, Darren? Yeah. You were with me You've touched this book before. Yeah. Oh, that was Because this book, I can tell you now, was signed in Kent. Oh, fuck. And yeah. it was signed in Kent. And Darren passed me every single book that was signed. So you would have opened this page for me to put the squiggle. And I can tell you from this squiggle that this would have been between the first and third hour of signing. Right, okay. Because shit got sloppy. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and that is how it looks after about three hours in of signing. Yeah, fuck yeah. But, but, but here's, here's the thing, right? So what I do when, when, when you boys... Release anything. I got I got some of Sonny's socks in in, in oh, the wardrobe sorry. over there. Show love, right? I yeah, love that. Yeah, yeah. So basically, what I do is I order some to the, some to Australia, and I order some to England. So because I never know where I'm going to be oh, on a normal time. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate and, that. And uh, so like I've got I've got two copies. I got I got assigned one of this in England as well, oh, and I got and I've got another signed one of those in oh, England as well. Because at the end of the day, when you when you're releasing a book, and uh, you know. You gotta, you gotta fucking support people. That's what it's all about. That. Because at the end of the day, he's spent fucking however long writing the thing, you know, and it's the least that anyone can do at the end of the day. Joke so that's just, on. that's it, just my opinion. It's crazy. The book writing process is mad. So like, um, you get, in my eyes, you get an incredibly generous offer to write a book. And in my mind, once you've got that, that's the project. It's almost like meet someone saying, Hey, can I pay you for six months? I want an hour of your time every day for six months. And, when you get that lump of money for that, I go, that's a good deal. I'm going to do it. And then when I write the the project, I think about the project being for 
hundreds of thousands of people so then i don't want to let the people down so it's yeah. never actually about book sales to me which is kind of why the people need to 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 whip it it's like it's like you're a project manager for six months and you've only got to do an hour's work every day and then you don't want to let down all the people that the project serves so are you just trying to write 500 to 1000 words a day um probably do you know what? I, I would sit down at a cafe i'll go to my brain's fatigued so some days yeah. i would sit and do three and a half thousand without even moving away from it yeah and other days it would be painful like trogging through like yeah. 500 to 1000 but then once it's done for me once i've recorded the audiobook i haven't even sold a copy and to me i'm like wow i'm done and then i forget i've got to then promote it to people and the fact that people show so much love in where i feel the book's done it's really just beginning and then when people go out their way yeah. to buy it and they order it and buy it for their friends, it's crazy because to me, it's almost seeing my project come to life. It, it, I, it's weird. When people talk to me during the book writing process, I hardly acknowledge that I've done it. And even when I get the when I get to the recording studio, I'm like, oh, fuck, I've written a book. Like That would a, be hard, though, the recording bit. It's about a week's work. But, it, the, but, read it, but reading your own book, surely that's hard. It's it's hard reading for hours and end, like two, three hours, because then after a while, the words start merging together and you miss out words. Did and you not smash it in two days or three days? The first one did in two days, but I'm not doing that again. Because it even affects your voice. You're like, you're, you're, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, then yeah. when I get home, I don't want to talk to anyone, but you start saying and instead of ofs, and then you don't pronounce things right. And the, the yeah, guy, yeah, credit yeah. to the people that work in the studios, they are so, they're like, nope, start again. Nope, start again. Different tone. Nope, go like, home. They were like, yeah, we need that. Yeah, the guy in Sydney. Yeah, you, Darren. You yeah. Darren's like a wagwan. Yeah. Yeah. I'm scrolling on the iPad. <laughs> Raw. <Yeah. laughs> as you scroll on the iPad to get to the next bit, he'd be like, should go home, I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. You'd be yeah. like, you're done. You're done. Brain like, yeah. 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 But it's it's awesome because the audiobook serves a completely different population of people that just aren't real readers. I, 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 love, hey. I, love, I love the fact that you released it early to make sure that the people in the UK had it for the lockdown. Yeah, it, it kind of uh, it did fuck our chart position quite a lot, but you got you, you, did you still chart as a as not a Sunday Times? Uh. So we bestseller, yeah, because it was Amazon bestseller. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, not Sunday Times, but to be honest, if I'm honest, you get I got the accolade from the first book, yeah. and I I think that being a two times Sunday Times two times number one Sunday Times bestselling, I think it only adds like ten percent to your accolade. Like if you're a gold medalist in the Olympics, yeah, I don't think being a two times gold medalist is is really you know, it's not double the feet, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, for me, the my publisher said to me, they're like, James, you're gonna you're gonna fuck your book chart position. But then we broke a HarperCollins audiobook record. I did more copies in the audiobook than Jay Shetty did in his. And Jay Shetty's got like twenty million followers or something. And J- and Jay Shetty, um, not this is not my opinion, but uh, apparently he uh, uses other people's content. He does. He's he's been called out for it. I think by Nicole Arbor online. Really? Yeah. yeah. And he, uh, and 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 that is not a fact. I'm not stating that is a fact. I'm just stating that is an opinion of heard. the BBC and oh, an really? opinion of Nicole Arbor. <laughs> I think mad, I think she called yeah. him out for a lot of um, basically put quotes up as like yeah, yeah, thumbnails yeah, yeah. that got th- tens of thousands yeah. of likes, and then they were attributed to other people. Yeah. And like oh, objectively right. speaking, similar to you, I don't know the the causation of it, but like. I believe that Jay Shetty's got like a lot of love because he became a monk and abstained from sex for like a year, but Ferris does that like most years. <laughs> oh my god, it's man! Having your own book, uh, it's yeah, mad. That, that, to be, you're gonna have your own book, man. Because I, I, I know a guy that called. Uh, well, I'm not gonna mention his name because he flies in the shadows. But I know a guy that could get you a book deal. But Should, I've I've been offered already two, three times. Oh, really? Yeah. Do you know what I reckon Darren's book would be like? It'd be like a. It'd be like, David I, I know what it's gonna be called. Raw. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't want. I don't want one yet because yeah. like, I'll get one. I'll get one when the time is right. But everyone's fucking doing it now. Smith right. had it. Smith did it in the right time. You better make sure that they do a different cover for you, otherwise you're going to get smashed after what you did to Matt Does Fitness. Oh, yeah. but you know what? He fucking follows me. Now. <laughs> he's a, he's a, he's a nice guy. He's a nice guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what, that, a nice yeah, guy. that was really Penguin. Yeah. So because um, you got because because yeah, basically there was this guy from Gym Shark called Matt Does Fitness, right? Yeah. And it, yeah, he's a nice, he's a nice guy, good. Rig. And he knows what he's doing. He's yeah. good. Yeah, like, he's, he's a good yeah, coach. He's a good I've looked guy, at his yeah. stuff, and he's come that. a long way. Yeah, he's come yes, a long he's way. been in the game for a long yeah, time. Yeah. I did that because I thought number one, I don't think he should have done that. As a as a friend, I was like, I'm going to call this out. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, to yeah, see yeah. the response. Yeah. He didn't respond. He ended up following yeah, me a few yeah, months yeah. later. <laughs> yeah, but um, I think he's a nice guy. Definitely. And, I don't and they did change fault. the book cover. It no longer looked like book one. They just made it look like book two, which is fine. Yeah. Um, 
but really it was Penguin pulling the strings behind, so I uh, declined Penguin to go to HarperCollins. But, d- but, how, but how, so did Penguin originally design the book cover then? No, so basically um, Penguin were the first people to approach me about a book. We said no maybe four or five times. Yeah. Then when they finally made a reasonable offer, we spoke to HarperCollins and they matched the offer. And without divulging too much information, it felt more homey. Job, yeah, I really enjoyed sitting with HarperCollins because they were like, we're going to support your project. And I don't want to throw Penguin under the bus, but I went and I met some of the bigwigs at Penguin in the UK. And I told them about how I wanted to write the book. And I mentioned a lot of authors that I've read and they were very surprised that I read books. And it kind of insulted me a bit where they were like, oh, you know that author? Yeah, and I was like, yeah, yeah. I was like, I read. I was like, I'm, and it yeah, almost because people just assume just because you're always in like athletic clothing that you're kind of a bit uneducated. I I really fucking hate it when people uh, break me down to just be a following. Yeah, and oh, I got really pissed off with bro. Giantissimo this week. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say this ice cream shop got smashed, mate. Like, <laughs> like, I thought I was gonna have to do content removal. I don't, I don't think I'm, in, yeah, I don't think I'm incredibly smart or gifted or anything yeah. like, but. When I got when I got offered a book project by HarperCollins, I felt they were like, you can write something that can help people and I believe you have the presence to get it out there and survive yeah, the book yeah, tour. Yeah, yeah. When I went with Penguin, they were like, oh, well, if 10% of your followers buy your book, we'll all make a lot of money. And that's how it felt. Yeah. And so, you know, I, I said a big sorry you to can, the guys. You already made a lot of money at the time anyway. You don't need to make, it's not just about it, money. Do you know what? It, it never was, to be honest. I actually said, no, I look like a bit of a dick because I refused uh, I said I never wanted to do a book because it was just the money maker, and it was actually uh, uh, Luke who said to me, "He goes, mate, there are people who think you're, who've only seen you for ten seconds online. They think you're a prick, and if they if your book is in Tesco's, they'll go, there's that prick from social media. They'll pick it up. They might read thirty words and decide you're not a prick. They might read the book. You might change their life, and they'll come to a live event when we sell out the O2 in a few years. Yeah. And I never thought of it like that. And then I also realised that. Piers Morgan isn't going to want to have a debate on TV with some fucking prick with a blue tick that's a PT that calls people twats. But he might want to talk to a best-selling author in the fitness space. And it's I never, positioning. It's yeah, positioning. Yeah. It, it positions you as an authority in your space because that's what author means, authority. And the people that have read his book, they still think he's a prick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, this guy was like, fuck this prick. <laughs> Threw your book across the room. I think, it was, I think when Smith did it at the time, I think it was perfect timing. I think, I don't know if you've noticed, but a lot of people in the UK everyone's like releasing a book now. And yeah, to yeah, me, yeah. I'm in not, the fitness industry especially. Yeah, and no one's writing them. No one's writing them. Mm. Do you know what I mean? If I write a book, I want to make sure I write it, number one. And number two, I so want it to have you're saying they're ghostwritten, a lot of these books? Yeah, a, a lot of fitness people. I'm not trying to throw anyone under the bus, but most people... Are ghostwriting. I yeah. think so. I, I think so. I could tell you that some of the... Uh, even Sunday Times bestsellers, the writer will spend up to 20 hours with a ghostwriter and that's it. Wow. So I, I know Gary Vaynerchuk, both his books are ghostwritten. There you go. Both of them. Not saying the content doesn't he, he, come he from just, the He just goes in and has a conversation about every... He writes down like 12 or 24 chapters or whatever, and then he'll have a conversation about each chapter, and then it will be like then dictated. they'll extend it, right? Dictated, yeah. and then they'll put some filler in there, and they'll throw some yeah. context around what you're yeah. saying, and they'll make it sound like him, and that's it. That's yeah. done. That's that's just, people yeah. say when they read this, they go, I feel like you're reading it to me, and I go, well, you should, because I wrote every single fucking word. Yeah, yeah. And that, to me, was really important, and I actually got really pissed off with HarperCollins, where... It's one long email. Yeah, that's they, what I thought. Mate, I it, thought it was one long yeah. fucking email. I thought it's great. That's yeah. why. That's why. That's, that's why I could good. read it because it's one. Because that's how it's written. It's written like a fucking email. Well, if and you if need you to write that in an email, you know, it's yeah. one long email. Yeah. If you yeah, like yeah. my emails, my, yeah. And, and 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 let us know how many books you sell. And me and Dylan will have a diet coke on you. <laughs> <laughs> I, sat, I sat with um, my strategy director, Arp Collins, and uh, when I presented the book, he goes, "We had a ghostwriter sitting on standby." And I was like, you fucking prick. I was like, if I couldn't write that book, I would have given you the money back. Like, I wouldn't have accepted yeah, 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 a ghost. Yeah, yeah. That, that really annoyed me. I was like, we, I agreed to give you my time. But how the fuck? It, it, it annoys me actually now. If you can't write a book, then don't write a fucking book because you're saturating a market. And people are going to read these fucking ghost written books and it's going to dilute what they perceive a good book is. But you got to understand as well, those people are dealing with let's be honest, most fitness people are yeah. fucking idiots. A, 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 and yeah, that, that's that's true. Like there's not much 
personality in certain parts of the fitness industry. No, there isn't. Eighty yeah. percent of the fitness industry are still posting content of how to do a home workout with nothing um, like a like a original. Like it's just it's just there's like no, but there's no yeah. value. They're not yeah. putting any value into it. But this is no this personality is the bit that annoys me. The thing is, you can still have a best-selling book because people are no longer viewed as talent. They're viewed as followings. And people are signing idiots with good physiques because that idiot with good physiques only needs 1% of their followers to buy the fucking yeah. ornament. Yeah. And they fucking t- chart in the book sales. And it annoys me because then imagine if someone follows or, or downloads the three fucking audio books from the three fucking Ken and Barbie dolls that they follow on Instagram. Yeah. They then perceive books as being shite and it affects proper, I'm not saying that I'm proper and they're not, but I kind of am. It affects proper author's integrity. And, you know, if you're going to be an say, author, you should be able to, you should be able to write your book or just proudly say it's fucking ghostwritten. Oh uh, yeah. If I did one, I would, I would say it's a bit like taking steroids. It is exactly like taking steroids. You cannot revel in the fucking, victory of your work if you're assisted tell people you're assisted because otherwise you yeah, are yeah, yeah. Di- assisted i love that word assisted you're right, you're, <laughs> you're you're assisted with the fucking testosterone you inject in your ass every yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and like this transparency do you know what if this fitness person has a ghost written book and they own it like david goggins right i uh, can't hurt me have you read that e, no when he does the audio book he has a narrator that calls it out and they have like a mini podcast at the end of each chapter where he interviews David on what's happened and it brings such integrity back to it where he's like, hell man, boat crew too, that's some fucked up shit. He's like, yeah man, we were out there fucking working so hard, our instructor's dick wouldn't work when they went home to fuck their wives and I'm like, yes, he's owning the fact that he is a marine, he is someone that's gone through hardship, he did have assistance writing the book and the guy who's interviewing him wrote the book with him and they both co-own it, and it's why it's such a good fucking book. David Goggins never pretended to be this authoritarian Yeah, so this author. guy's name's on it as well. Yeah, 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 yeah he yeah, is yeah. divulging lessons but from yeah. his life. Every, everyone that's doing the book stuff now, which is why I definitely don't want one, not now anyway, is that, for example, say if I do a fitness one, although it's going to be me, the way I explain my stuff is very different to the way Smith does it. Yeah. In essence, most fitness books are the same fucking thing explained yeah, yeah, in a different way. Like all these fitness people bringing out, oh, energy balance. Okay, cool. Oh, neat. Okay, how to build muscle. All of this shit. It's all the same stuff. But it's boring as well. It's boring. It's exactly. So boring. If someone, say me, was to go in with a book, I'm, I'm coming in with a different angle, hence why I'm not rushing. And number two, when the time is right, it would just naturally happen anyway, as it did for you. Do you know what I mean? It was not yeah, a yeah, yeah. scenario where it was forced. Everyone's going, now to their manager, I want a book deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah That's yeah. what happened during Corona. All the fucking influencers have got books. And I'm thinking, bruv, <laughs> you can't even train someone, let alone write a book. Do you know what I mean? And it was- They can't train themselves. Yeah, that's yeah, what yeah, I'm yeah. saying. And I see it online and I'm thinking, fucking It's mad because people come along, they're like, yo, Darren, how does 100 grand stand to write a book? And Darren's like, I don't want to look like a cunt. Yeah, I don't want to look like a cunt. <laughs> and, like, and, and do you know what? A lot of people are. Yeah, a lot yeah, of people yeah. don't care about how their book yeah. does. Short sighted, yeah, yeah, short sighted. Yeah, and that is the thing. That is the thing. Like in in all these industries that are involved around like Instagram influencers and this that, and the other. I know you, that's not what you boys are and or what you pretend to be because I know that's not your business. Your business is your email list. Your business is helping clients, right? But a lot of these people are always like, okay, I can I can do this five grand deal a day here and five grand with this and they work for so many fucking brands yeah. and I watched some 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 women on Instagram and they'll one day they'll be repping this bikini company and the next day it's another bikini company and the next day it's another bikini company and they don't understand how much damage that does to their credibility it's confusing times because because people don't I don't know anything about bikinis but I know if she's showing me Mona on Monday and pretty little thing on fucking Wednesday then I'm like well fuck me does she like is she a Mona girl or is she pretty about pretty no, but you also thing? feel like you're treated in a weird way where you're like oh yeah. I'm just a number to you then yeah, and then, yeah, yeah, and yeah, then yeah, I yeah. think it can work people like Hattie Boyd or who's with Muscle Nation I feel she's yeah. been with that brand as long as I've known her and do you know what? if someone was going do you know some really good active wear I'd actually say oh do you know what have a look at Hattie's content yeah. she's, 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 she's been, been with one though yeah I'm talking about yeah I'm no, ta- no no I'm yeah. talking the polar opposite yeah, so yeah, the fact yeah, yeah. that I'm like there's no way she's she a wear rig, that. bro. She's a cool person as well. She's a really nice girl. Yeah. I've trained with her a couple of times, and she's, she's really fun. To weapon. Be weapon. That WBFF is 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 weapon status. But you know what? It's mad. Like uh, when I that's exactly how I perceived her, and it's crazy because 
that's how I knew her. And then I met her and I was like, fuck, she's a really cool chick. I um, probably will get her on um, the podcast some point soon. But like, and, and I rate that because when I see her promoting gym wear, I'm yeah. not like, oh, you fucking sell out. I'm like, you know what? You rock the shit You're out of that all yeah, the yeah, time. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're doing your thing and you deserve to. Because that Lauren Simpson's a nice girl too, isn't she? Yeah, she's really cool. She's really cool. Yeah. And, and Mark as well. Mark Carroll. I've never met them. I don't know. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna but lie. They're, they're like, they, Darren's like, yeah, they're nice people. I, I, love, I don't I know, love, I don't know, I don't know them. But I like, don't know them. The Sydney, the Sydney scene, albeit quite small, everyone's actually really friendly. Like, uh, and do you know what? Even in Gold Coast, and do you know what? When I do, you know what? Everyone's uh, everyone's friendly face to face. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, uh, this guy tried to steal my trademark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everyone's friendly, bro. But like, uh, I can't believe how juicy. Is the steroid yeah, yeah, yeah. vibe here? Well, here isn't well, it? Oh we, we trained in wild gym. gym, wild gym well, yeah, yeah. Days, I, I knew he was in wild gym because my mates, my mate who's been on my podcast as well, Dan Meffin, he uh, he's like, oh, I saw I saw the, uh, a couple of the guys that you're going to have on your podcast, like in the gym, like. Do you know yeah. what I mean? So he saw, he saw you boys down there, but yeah, he he says the same thing about world gym Burley, wasn't it? That's where you. I, oh, but I said man, if juicy. I was if I was training there at eighteen, I would have gone on a big cycle to try yeah, and keep up. Sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. That that to me is like going for dinner with rich people yeah. and sitting there going, I yeah. don't belong here. Yeah, and I'm I'm gonna have to rob a bank or start dealing. I know, and I, but th- th- those boys are on some serious cycles there, though. I would, I would, I can't imagine anything. Like they're on the fucking trend, and they're and then they're running different fucking feel, protocols. It and feels kind of nice, man. When well, you're on, but it's I just you know. and the gym and the food, man. Let, let, let's t- so. <laughs> when was the first time you tried steroids? Uh, I was at uni. I was probably about nineteen, twenty, and my friend had a Tupperware box with Dynabol in it. Little red tablets. How old were you? Like nineteen or twenty. Shut up. No, I was twenty one actually. You ever tried it, dude? No, bro. Never tried it. Done anything. Uh, So I was there, and I was taking. We were just taking them ad hoc. I was taking them like vitamins. You know, you take a multivitamin like two a week, then none for a week, and I was just taking it as a pre workout. I didn't know what it was. (laughs) Shut up. Yeah, just take a couple (laughs) of for going gym. Man, I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah, I was eating sausage rolls for breakfast and taking dynabol. If if I was, you know what? I would love to. I would love to see what. You can create out of it, but if I was to ever do something like that, I'm Mate, going. You'd be in. huge, man. I'm cause going because you got bruv. the you got like the ethnic genes, so you'd be massive, bro. Village thing, bro. You, Mate, you, you you'd be you'd be. You'd I'll, be get a the, I'll definitely get the spots on my back and that. I'll definitely have that you, madness, Mate, And do you know what the thing is? Apparently, it makes your hair grow even more, man. You'd be a me, bear. Imagine me, bro. <laughs> I am um, a bear, bro. bro. <laughs> I, I then had a mate. I played rugby. There's a scrum half, just normal size scrum half, and then he turned into this big dude. And I messaged him. I was like, yo. What do I need? He's like, I'll sell you everything. It wasn't that expensive. It's actually really cheap. The testosterone costs nothing. There's everything else you need on top of it. Um, so then I said to him, I want to do oral. I want to take tablets. He was like, no, you need to run injectables. I was like, why? He's like, it's safer. I'm like, you're telling me injecting safer. He's like, yeah. He showed he because it, it bypasses the liver, right? Yeah, so it just goes. Uh, it's an oil that goes straight into your system rather than your body having to break it down. Because yeah, okay. if it goes through your liver, it's, it goes through twice, doesn't it? Or yeah, it's like toxic that? as well. Yeah, so yeah. The, the orals are toxic in a sense. So he was like, "Are you going to go out the weekend?" I was like, "I'm probably going to drink the odd, every odd weekend." So he was like, "Yeah, take injectables." And I'm shitting my pants. He's like, "Right, here's your green, here's your blue. This is the one you inject with. This one you draw through the oil with." And I remember the first time I injected, it's intramuscular, so you've got a, a needle that's about three inches long. You've got to put two and a half of it into your glute. And I've not got the best mobility anyway. And first week, you don't notice anything. Tail part of second week, you start to notice it. You've also got a big placebo that you're on gear now. By week three, I'm flying. And I'm loving training. So I you're mean, training twice a day at this point. Yeah, and I'm, I'm and this is just before I became PT than once when I was a PT. And I get out of bed. And the aggression you have isn't like you want to get out and fight. You get up and, you know, like when you've been off the booze for a bit, you've been looking after yourself, eating well, you get up, you're like, I'm going to go to the gym. Then I'm going to come home. I'm going to do a podcast. I'm going to read it for an hour. I'm going to nap. I'm going to do this. Then I'm going to go. And that's just a productivity level. Imagine of what that you're times doing. five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you're on the gate, you feel invincible. You're what about horny. horny? Like a dog's dick, man. You're really? horny. But you, doesn't it shrink your balls, though? Yeah, your balls shrink into, because they're not producing natural testosterone. Yeah, 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 so yeah. they pop up in you every now and then, but it's fine. Because you're literally Back in your sockets. Then does your balls go into producing testosterone normally? It does, when you right? come off. When you, come off. you don't have to do like T C test or something. T- yeah, T C P or something. H C G. H yeah. I don't so know. you uh first of all you take testosterone for say twelve weeks. Yeah. Uh, then before when you come off, you would then have a two week period where you take a break, if I remember correctly. Then you could take pregnal, which uh there's like a something axis that connects your brain to your balls to kick start you. They give it to kids when the balls don't drop. They then give you tamoxifen or Novadex, which is like a breast yeah. cancer drug. 
Uh, Dear is you, making a list to prescribe to his clients. You can say, Anna, <laughs> uh, there's, so one thing you've got to watch out for is aromatization. So you can get aromadex. So if your nipples get too sensitive, you're aromatizing, you're converting testosterone to estrogen. That's when the guys get the gyne. Gyne, yeah, 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 yeah. And you have to have it cut out. I see this guy on, I was looking at this, uh, someone sent me a TikTok and then, uh, you know, when you get sent a TikTok, it goes on to another TikTok before you know it. <laughs> yeah. And you, and you watch three TikToks. There's this guy, there's this, a plastic surgeon on there and he's cutting like open the nipple like this and he pulls this big like bitch tit out of this guy sure yeah like just pull just pulls these big fat pieces of bitch Mate, tits out. Dwayne Johnson The Rock yeah he, he had, had bad guy yeah, yeah, he was yeah, wrestling yeah yeah, yeah. then they've had to remove that bit so yeah. he's obviously fine now but the thing is people talk about these bad side effects my strength was increasing at a rate that was scaring me yeah my yeah. mates my other PTs in the gym were like nah they were like, why are you squatting that? I was like, boys, I, I don't know. I'm, you know, like Limitless, the film, Bruce Willis, yeah, where he yeah, just keeps yeah, adding yeah, weight. Yeah, yeah. It was like that. And I, I did 15 chin-ups. And normal people can't add more than like two and a half kilos a week when they get to their best. I was like, adding 10 kilograms every two, three days. And yeah. You know what? That is like, you're so lucky you didn't get a bad injury. Well, because your body's not actually, although you may feel like that, your body's probably not robust enough to be able to handle that yeah like your, sk- like your your sk- skeletal structure do you know what I mean like at the end of the day but that's why I do such high volume work because I would get 35s that I'd be doing chest supported row I'd usually do 5 to 10 I'd then bust that 25 reps yeah that's what I'm making and then I'd put the lifting straps on and I'd do my reps and then I'd be like 4 more then I'd be like 3 more and you're like a sick bastard you love it and then you come out and you look at yourself and you're like you're vascular as fuck yeah and then the worst thing is I never knew when to go home because I would train and then I'd be tired. I go work another body. But part. your recovery's so quick. Even in a workout, and I'd be like, "Oh, my triceps are cramping." I'd go do some pec flies, and I'd be like, "Oh, just a hundred dips." And I'd go home, and I'd do four sets twenty five and walk out. And then I get home and I wake up from a nap and be like, "I could train again." Really? It, but it's that's mad. But then the the other crazy this like negative feedback loop is then I'd go meet my friends. I haven't seen them in ten days, and they walk in. They're like, "You're on gear," and I was like, "What?" They're like, "You're bigger." They're like, "You're bigger." than 10 days ago and like it got to the point that when I would see my rugby teammates my whole team knew I was on gear after about three weeks they were like they were like you're too big and also your attitude changes they're like you didn't drink at the weekend you didn't come out they were like you're looking bigger people clock it straight away yeah, 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 yeah. I had to wear baggy t-shirts when I was training because my clients were noticing yeah, yeah. even old women that don't really and pay it's, attention it's a to big me. stigma with it I find in the UK compared to here I told all my clients I was like I said oh, I'm on steroids they're like really it's not bad for your health I'll be like well so it's going out and drinking and snorting lines of cocaine off people's bums but yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. for me it was like a 12 week holiday where at least my body knows what testosterone is my body doesn't know what cocaine is so like for me it was just you know overshooting sort of hormone that already exists in my body putting myself at risk but it was a 12 month training holiday and then come the end of it, you have a low point for two weeks. and 12 months? No, 12, uh, two weeks. Oh, so yeah. you have two weeks where you're really struggling a bit because you're getting weaker. But then once you come out the other side of it, you're like, that was sick. Do you, do you, do you keep the majority of the gains if you do it right? I probably or? kept, I didn't do it right, but I kept at least a kilogram every cycle. Yeah, yeah. Like a kilogram, noticeable kilogram. My legs, I'm weak as piss at the moment, but I look like I could compete. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Because your your legs, you reckon you've kept that from all them, all them yeah, years. Yeah, and and the blood vessels. I think Mate, that's another reason blood why vessels, when he when he does. Yeah, because because obviously they had to get wider, higher volume, and the intensity looks. Yeah, well, barely any intensity, and I'm thinking, how is this guy looking so vascular? And also, yeah. crazy. People say about muscle and you're tan too, bruv. Oh, bruv, yeah. I'm t- but I never get that vascular. But, never. But the thing yeah. is, when because my. I reckon if you shaved your arms, you would. Yeah, maybe. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> if you, think of, a, if you think, of a, think of a muscle being like a balloon, right? First yeah. time you blow it up, it's the toughest. And once you've blown it up, it can get there very yeah, easily. Yeah, yeah. So my, um, like the stretch marks, my muscle mass, everything like that, it's been at a higher threshold. So it's quite easy to get back there. Yeah. And even when I, when I start training and eating well, I just inflate back to a similar size. Yeah. You can go from one extreme to another really quick. I thought yeah. I could, yeah. but you could you, go even quicker. I've seen your traps get massive when you... Bruv, you know what? He did a a cycle before, when we first met, I think. 2016, no, 2017. 2017, and I was like, bruv, this guy's face looks different. Uh, it was I was my, like, I was like, well, you look, you, I'm not, no offense, but I'm like, this, brother, you're looking like a pig right now. <laughs> <laughs> his neck was like, his neck was like coming out. I'm thinking, raw. But then when you came off, I've never seen you look so healthy. It, there was one cycle I did with an Aussie lad, and I let him decide what we were taking, and it was too much. <laughs> one, I was on too, too much, mate. I was retaining yeah. a lot of water in my face, and although my performance was good, I didn't feel. Was good. it? Was it that book picture? 
No, 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 no. It was, no, uh, bruv. It was, it was quite well, bad. Because, because obviously that, that's a le- that's a leaner face on that book than that book. Which one? This, this is a lot leaner in the face than the, you, the not is, a diet book. Do you know what, what Photoshop you know, does? Do you know what it is? Yeah, <laughs> that's me living in London. That's me living in Oz. I yeah, so that, that's you walking. That's you walking on a skateboard and that's you on the tube. Yeah. Yeah, well, if that's not an advert for why you should move to Australia, I don't know what is, bro. Cheap bags. Photoshop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, always, I always get a bit like edgy when they offer you bags in Woolworths. Do you know what I mean? Like, oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, how many bags do you want? I'm like, I don't, well, I don't, you I joke. Fuck, you, you're 64 and you're t- talking shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> I joke a lot about uh, cocaine culture because it's, yeah. it's so prevalent. And like, do you reckon it's more prevalent in the UK or here? I honestly don't know. I I I, I think it's way more here. You you reckon? Yeah, hundred percent. But I don't depends think it's area. If you okay, it depends how you look at it. Like statistically, with numbers yeah. and stuff. Eastern suburbs, mad. Yeah. But if you look at in a culturally way, every fucking teenager, everyone here mm. does it. If you're yeah, if you're yeah. from London, actually, it's, yeah. If you're middle class. Yeah. yeah, you're doing it. You're if doing you... it. If you're poor, you do weed. Right. Okay. Honestly. Yeah, that, yeah, and then yeah. in or you Aust- deal. Or you deal. And in yeah. Australia, like, yeah. I used to know boys in my ends, they used to deal, but they never used to do coke. You know? They used to call it that like white boy drug. <laughs> right? yeah. And But if you come to Australia, Australia, like, the whole country is pretty much middle class. And, I mean, you yeah, go to any yeah. sort of corporate event. My first ever uh, party as a PT, uh, when I first got to Jewel Street Fitness First in Sydney, uh, when I went out, I've never seen so much drugs in my life, bruv. Yeah. I was in shock. They're, I was like, hold on a second. They, they, I thought everyone here was healthy. They that don't, was my... They don't, Australians don't think nothing of spending $300 on a bag of cocaine. Yeah. Because they're not... This is the thing. They're conditioned for that, though. Yeah, that's it's completely normal. It's like yeah. they skipped the drinking part. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know that yeah. drinking phase? Hollywood yeah. depicts drug use as being really bad. And I'm not saying that it's good. and It does wreck a lot of lives. I'm not saying that. But you find that a lot of intelligent people and success driven people a lot of you know respectable professions lawyers doctors nurses everything people like to enjoy everything that alcohol gives them but they also don't like getting tired they don't like getting hungry like the, there's like a curve with booze right every time your alcohol level is increasing in your blood you feel good when your alcohol level starts to decrease you feel bad that's why you can't have five beers and drink water because the the positive feeling only comes on your way up yeah so then what eventually happens is it comes to a point where people either black out, get smashed, or go for a kebab. Then their night's over and they go home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What cocaine allows people to do is keep going up. And it also allows them to straighten out. And it also allows them to uh, let their inhibitions down. It lets them talk to people. They become more chatty. They become more empathetic. They become more interested. So where people go, are oh, people are cokeheads. Part of me argues this belief and goes, people are actually being intelligent. They're turning, if they're going to invest $1,000 into a night out, they might as well make it 1300 and allow that trajectory to keep going. Have more meaningful conversations. Snap out of being too drunk to go to the toilet. And you know what? Two people enjoy going to a cubicle together and having a bump together. It's a meaningful experience to them that makes them both their nights better. It wouldn't surprise me if this is legalized. And the only thing that will change on a night out if co- drug cocaine is legalized is where people do it. Because yeah. people are doing it in the toilets anyway. If they did yeah. it at a table, it would take three months for society to get used to it. The conversations yeah. would be the same. The bar tabs would be the same. Any yeah. scraps that occur would be the same. Because they, they demonise it, and then and then it, then that allows it to be cut with a load of shit, and then I, people are not getting a real. I'm shit. not gonna lie. I don't think I'll ever have. When I see someone snorting coat in my head, I just think, bruv, I'm not. I, I don't like the sight of it. If I yeah. saw that on the table, I'd be like, no, nah, bruv, I'm not letting my kids. Yeah. See that. And, I'm and, and I'm not saying that I'd like, like want my kids yeah. to. No, I know you. I know you don't. But hey, hold on, you're not even getting married. Are you had kids? <laughs> no, you know I mean? no, but like, I'll definitely, I'll definitely, yeah, I'll yeah. definitely breed. But like, yeah. in my in my head, in my, in my head, I'm like, yeah, I don't, I don't think there's a problem with anything people do, whether it's drugs or whatever. Yeah, it's just in moderation. But I just think people will now find it even more casual to use it as an escape. They already do that with alcohol. Now, when you give the freedom of, say, something like, I, I agree with you with the psychedelics, that sort of stuff. I agree. Well, yeah, I've never done you can, it yet. You can, open, you can open up pathways with psychedelics, yeah. can't you, at the end of the day? I'm not going to lie. If you start legalizing corporate man, then walking into a bar going, yeah, mate, yeah, so today that looks, it was a good sale. But <laughs> do you know what I mean? The, and then it just becomes. The excitement is from it being taboo. 
Oh, and, and then it will drop. Yeah, yeah I guarantee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think we've started to see this in Portugal. We started to see this. In, yeah, because they legalised uh, it, and 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 the and the rates of of drug use dropped by eighty percent or something. Because it's the boot. How great was getting booze to sit in the front room and have a bottle of gin when you were sixteen? But as soon as you turned eighteen, you're like, I'm not fucking doing that. Yeah, the the excitement in it, the forbidden fruit. There's been times in my younger years where I remember um, it's really um, well. Fuck it, I was seeing a girl who had a boyfriend, and. <laughs> She, it, <laughs> Good it, work, bro. No, it was it was bad at the time, and I kept saying to her, "You got to break up with him." So she did. And the next time we had sex after they broke up, there was nothing there, and we never had sex again. Yeah, because you didn't have the excitement anymore. And it's fucked up to say that a lot of people are going to go, "That's perverse" or whatever. If if people legalized it, we could see a drop in in usage. And again, like people are just using it as a tool to get more out of their night. And I'm not saying that it's good or it's objectively bad. I'm just saying that people need to stop pretending this isn't happening because this is annoying. It's happening, yes, right. I would say that maybe eight out of ten people that drink between 20 and 30 will do cocaine at least once every six months. And that's from what I've been exposed to. And there's this underground society that we are pretending doesn't exist. Similarly with suicide during COVID, no, we are just pretending and being ignorant to the fact that in a bid to save spread of disease that people that are perfectly healthy are, are killing themselves or becoming depressed or developing mental health issues and the things we talk about always suit the narrative of society it's the narrative of society don't want to uh, they don't want to come to terms with the fact that most people do cocaine don't want to come to the fact that most people are struggling in silence right now they don't want to come to the fact of like all of these things they just want things to carry on as usual and if you talk about this stuff like I am now, you become an outlier. You become someone who you are, you're an advocate and people paint you with their brush. They are, oh, James Smith is telling people they should be doing I cocaine. I think the majority of the people that will say that are people that can't face the truth and they'll get really defensive about it yeah. because a lot of people around them know there's people suffering from that and they don't want to face it. Yeah. I think people that have that opinion will be like that, but you're right, 100% agree. But and people just need to find a better escape escape yeah, yeah, yeah in the sense well, of doing actually, something actually i think or, more people need to be open to discussion d- d- discussing why they feel like that and and is it their job that's leading them to like that is it their partner that's leading them to feel like that or what what is it what is it about my life that i feel like i have to escape from it i'm doing this right now that's why i'm sober so i'm yeah. coming up next week will be the longest i've ever been sober ever in my life since i first touched alcohol what day i don't know let's celebrate with a drink <laughs> and, and the reason I'm doing He's that got is a bottle of there. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I like alcohol. Do you know what? No, but I, you don't want to be defined by alcohol. No, and also I, you know, and I like, I like a lot of drugs. I like magic mushrooms. I love taking LSD once a year. You know, um, there have been occasions where I've I've taken cocaine. You know, if I'm in Ibiza and I need to get from a day party to a night party, I'm not telling other people to do it, but I will do it. But it came to a point where I was like, oh. I need to reevaluate what's important to me and what isn't. And if I remove a vice from, and that is all it is to me, a vice. And we all have vice. Some people wank over feet. Mine is going out and enjoying time. <laughs> it's weird. Some people like putting they toes do. in places they shouldn't. But yeah, to me, yeah, that's yeah. my vice and I'll own Sick it. Fucks. And if people don't like that and they go, oh, I can't read your book because you said that, then fuck off and read someone else's. But the, the fact of the matter is I'm taking some time out to appreciate, to find out if I am filling a void. And if I am filling a void, I'm going to go on a little journey of discovery and finding out what that is. And that's going to involve magic like, mushrooms. It's mad. No, 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 because I'm not touching them. Are oh, you not touching them I'm either? completely yeah. sober. Yeah. Yeah, 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 It's mad because yeah, yeah, I can yeah. see a change already. Yeah. 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 Good, 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 good or bad. Yeah, very good. Yeah. I, think, I think like where you're from and rugby background, people around you, the drinking culture was always there. So you kind of thought, well, not that it's not normal, but it is the norm where you're from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I never had that. I started yeah. drinking at 25. So when I drink, I really? have, yeah, so I don't have, if I was to get absolutely smashed today. One bottle of beer, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to be, I'm actually a lot better at drinking now. But I'm, I, what made you just start there at 25? Honestly, I was concentrating on f- uh, football and I was taking life a bit too serious. I banter about it. I started drinking when I was Smith, but it's not, it's got nothing to do with Smith. It was the you fact that I let, no, I let go. Yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah. I let go. Yeah, yeah. I stopped caring. I let go. I stopped caring about, oh, fuck, if I have a drink, I'm not going to be able to perform well tomorrow in football or this or yeah. that. Whereas actually I just relaxed a lot more and things became better, but I found the right balance. So if I was to get absolutely smashed this weekend, I'm not seeking for it again for a long time. Do you know what I mean? This, uh, the reason I'm here for the tour I'm going to have fun on the tour. I'm going to have a drink at the tour, go on stage, maybe a little bit a bit tipsy and have a laugh with the crowd and yeah. talk and whatnot. When I'm back in England, I never, I don't, oh, I, 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 don't I forgot I don't we were doing it. a podcast about the tour. Yeah, <laughs> I but like, I, don't, I don't crave it, but I think yeah. because I've 
been conditioned well, I guess, in that sense. I don't, I found other escapes, not that he doesn't, but he's, I can see already, like, he's seeing, like, appreciating other things more yeah, than yeah, yeah, yeah. going for that drink. A part of me even feels bad sometimes when I'm having a drink in front of him. I'm yeah. like, oh, fuck. Yeah. But, I, I, bought, I, bought, I bought you know non-alcoholic beers they're in the fridge for you and obviously bought you alcoholic beers but like yeah. I, I, I just find when you don't drink there's pe- the people that stay around you when you don't drink are the people that are, are, are more respectful of you you know I'm, what I mean I'm gonna find out with my real friends like yeah 100% months. right so and I I have I have lost a lot of friends in life well they weren't my friends anyway, but I had to realise that they weren't my friends the hard way. And it fuck it, it's fucking upset me sometimes, boys. I'll be totally honest with you. How would you feel when you come back from the toilet, you're drinking a fucking J2O in a pub and someone spikes it with like vodka or someone oh. or some or someone's or someone's put fucking tried to put like you can see someone's like tipped a bag of white powder into your fucking drink or do you know what I mean? Like I've had I've had friends like that. Do you know what I mean? How do you, uh, and and yeah, me, I can't, I can't, I can't tolerate people like that. Like, I so, so, I, I fully respect you, you not drinking, and I fully respect you trying it because you wanted to experience something. Yeah, yeah but I think that the, the, the what's wrong with society is, and what you're going to learn in the best way possible is that you can. There's going to be a lot of people that are surround you, James, that are not your friends. I try right. to trip me up. I, I have nightmares about it. I've only been sober six weeks, but. If someone put because I bantered you about it, but yeah. I didn't try and force alcohol down. You know, no, no. you walk through no, the door. No, yeah, no. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, someone, there's a difference. There's yeah, yeah. a difference. I bantered you about it in the DM, but I didn't. I didn't. When you walked in, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't try and tempt you with a bottle. I, of alcohol. I would be so annoyed because they would be ruining my progress, my personal yeah, 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 progress. Yeah, and people and, tried it, and this is a personal journey for me. And, and again, like, uh, and it's the, the, if someone did that to me, I would be fucking fuming because they would have put a, f- a, 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 a stop in my momentum. Yeah. And even if it was just one shot of vodka in a J2O, yeah. it would affect me so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the same when you've like offered me something before and I've said no like maybe three, four times. You've never actually said anything ever again. We were, we were in uh, Berlin, right? It's New Year's Eve. Yeah. We get a message that we were on the guest list for Bergein. Yeah. Which is the one of the best that, clubs that, in the world. That, that, is, that, is that that club you have to be dressed in a certain way and answer a set of questions to get in? That's wow. kind, mad, kind mad. of. It's the one with the six yeah. hour queue to get in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I went for a piss in the toilets, helped a German guy roll a joint, and I made friends with him. And he gave me a gift and he got a pill out, an uh, MDMA pill. I said, Let me buy it off you. He goes, If you buy it, it would not be a gift. <laughs> 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 so I come out, I, I sit next to Duren. It's about half an hour till midnight. And I yeah. go, Duren, we're, we're going to go Bergheim tonight. And so we went there and I, I took the pill. And I said to him, I only said once, I said, I'm only going to ask you once, but if we get inside, I'm biting half of this and I'm going to give you the other half if you want to have it. And he goes, All right. Didn't say yeah, didn't say no. Turns out we got told to fuck off in the queue because we didn't know who was playing. The German guy was like, okay, okay, who's playing tonight? And we're like, I don't know. He's like, fuck off. And I thought he was yeah. joking. He literally was throwing people out see, physically. Yeah, yeah, see, yeah. literally up because but you did. I, I would not have been like, you got to do it, you got to do it, you got to do it. Yeah, 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 There's yeah, three yeah, times. Yeah. One when we did a private jet to Ibiza. One when we uh, had a pill at Burger and There's probably one other time where I'll just say, Darren, this is here. If you want it, take it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just don't see if I, I feel like my life's at a big high right now. I don't yeah, need to go yeah, any no, higher. I, I, and mate, I, I, I just fucking love life. You know yeah, what I'm saying? So yeah. if, you, if, if you're at that, if you're comfortable within yourself, I don't think yeah. you need to do it. I think it's great that you're not drinking because I think the opportunity that you've got now to find out if everyone around you does want the best for you. Because let me tell you something: when you dr- when you don't drink, that's when you find out who really does want the best for you. I, I, I'm not gonna lie. I see it. I have conversations with management about it. I see it. And it's gonna be funny when Smith sees it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah not funny, yeah, it's just gonna be yeah, yeah, yeah. it's gonna be um Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like I, Yeah, I, I, I yeah. Do you yeah, get what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And I, I, it's just like, a natural thing. Oh yeah, we're going out Smith's day, yeah, let's yeah, go have a piss up. Yeah, you know what I mean? Whereas yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. I can just hang with Smith and do nothing. Yeah. He can hang with yeah, me and do nothing. There's yeah. never any expectations yeah. of that. And if if you're not at that level, I don't even think We we had some great we had some great chats at breakfast. We didn't fucking we didn't have no alcohol or nothing. You know, yeah, what I mean? exactly. we, just, we just sat by the beach yeah. enjoying everyone, and that's the point. The point I'm trying to make is like, you just want people around you that enjoy your company for your company, and not because of of any substance you bring to the table or any clout or anything else that you bring to the table. Yeah. Just just be there for because you actually like me and you actually want the best for me, and you'll see me win. Like no, that's it. And also, like if I if I look deeply at my values about what makes me happy, like partying makes me happy, but it also brings actually 100 percent of my headaches. 
So the, nothing in life brings me headaches. Nothing. Yeah. Apart it's, from it's after hours. Con- it's after it's, it's your after hour after eight o'clock activities that bring you all your problems. All my problems, and only ten percent of my happiness. But if you're in bed by nine, all those problems are gone for ten percent less happiness. Yeah. To me, that's a fucking good deal. Yeah. And I, I, when I told Luke this, about it, yeah, yeah, he he was like, "You sure?" And I was like, "Yeah, I wouldn't be telling you if I wasn't sure." And I said to him, "Luke's a nice guy, man. Is and he's he's got my back as well." And um, I I was saying to him like, "I get to park everything that can go wrong this year for for a few less headaches." And I said to him, "Everything that will go wrong this year will be tied to alcohol." I said to him straight up, "Yeah, I like, got mate, twenty twenty one. If anything bad happens, it'll be tied to alcohol." You know, Luke said to me, he says, "If you fuck this up, Frankie." I'm deleting you off LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, sounds, sounds sounds like Luke. Sounds like yeah. Magic, but um, S- I had S- fun, bro. That was yeah, fun. yeah. But but like, let's as we're here for the tour. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about the tour. Yeah, yeah. T- tomorrow is the opening night, boys. Yeah. Of the Australian leg, the start of this fucking worldwide tour yeah. of yours. Yeah, so, yeah. How so, fucking buzzed are you? Because I'm buzzed for so you. So basically, I'm getting a ton of fucking cash for this. So I'm buzzing. Yeah, you're getting a ton of cash. No, for I'm yeah, <laughs> I'm messing. But oh. I'm like, I'm just grateful to be here, and I can't wait to. Um, I love doing like I love doing events with Smith and just like having a good time, you know. So and talking in front of people and just sharing moments with people that kind of appreciate what you do and who you are. I can't wait for that. I'm so, so great. what have people got to look forward to in Brisbane for the opening night? What you got planned? Like a two hour TED talk. Yeah. Two hour TED talk about drugs, birds, alcohol. Actually, none of them. No, nah, none of them the topics. Nah. I think it's just going to be. Give us a run through of the topics without without giving too much away. Uh, misconceptions the human brain makes. Um, how people can apply that into their life, and then yeah. I'll make them apply it into their life. Quite yeah. a little physical task for people. Um, a laugh, a few, a lot of laughs, um, and then yeah. some practical applications to take away that people will use because I've actually taking a close look at the biggest impact my work's had on people in the last five years and I'm going to make people apply it. Awesome. Yeah. So you, you think it was a calorie deficit but there's actually pretty much other things at play which I'm going to there there's going to be people in the crowd that have actioned what I've, done, what I've said and a lot of people that haven't. Yeah. This talk is to the people that haven't and the people that have already done it They'll enjoy just seeing the... The, the reaction of the people that haven't. Yeah, they'll enjoy seeing the cogs go around of the people around them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just that, live in the flesh is all. Is, is also... I think when you're there live with people interacting, I think it's a different level of energy, a different level of inspiration. And I think when people get a glimpse of that, say through me or through him or whatever, I think it's just going to take them to the next level. This could be the first time that 700 people have spent two hours not on their phone. Is it is it is it seven hundred people? You've, you've sold out seven hundred here. Seven hundred. We got a thousand sold out Melbourne. Shit, that's tomorrow. <laughs> We're at about seven hundred for Adelaide. So yeah. we've got some tickets left. Uh, Sydney, I think, is about a thousand. I think so far we've done eleven. And and to be doing those numbers in venues in Australia in Corona time is fucking brilliant. Well, UK is our bigger tour. We've sold everything nearly in the UK. So what's your biggest venue? And obviously London's obviously the biggest venue. London and Manchester. So where about where are you 1300, doing London? The Roundhouse. Yeah, yeah, great. So we sold out the Roundhouse, and then Manchester. We've done 1500, 1600. Yeah. Sick. We've done eleven thousand tickets in lockdown. And I remember watching your first show, boys, and it was sixty or I'm sure it was sixty people in. 60 or 70 in yeah. Wales. And uh, yeah, and he did one in Scotland as well. Yeah. That was that was only like 40, 50 people, but it's a buzzing atmosphere, man. John you know like if it, it was crazy, it's like I would never one of my favorite talks was Maidstone. It's like 60 people. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I came out and it was weird because the crowd that was in front, first of all, imagine like an amphitheater. No one's in the back. It's only the first five, six rows. And then people are spread out like it's fucking COVID. So imagine like this, the one talk didn't, didn't make it to you. And afterwards, I was like, bro, you didn't, imagine I this. Did, but I didn't even know I was in, like involved. This yeah, was this yeah, was like yeah, maybe yeah, saying, you, you were with Fliss. This was second show. And, this um, is, this is, oh, you shouldn't mention that name. Oh, you can. Know. It's cool. And, um, <laughs> and, uh, so, we, so we go to Maidstone and like we get there and it's funny because it was like such a small crowd that we all just went to one bar and it was fine after. And um, when there, I had a good time and there was a couple of, uh, there was an old couple in the back who had come along, they were members of the theatre. So they'd just come to the show, not knowing what it was. And the first time I dropped a C-bomb, they left. Right. And um, it was kind of funny because even Luke at the time, my manager, he's driven from Portsmouth to fucking Maidstone just to see me do a one-hour venue. He's probably lost a £1,000 for this event. But he's buzzing it's going ahead. 
And when I'm there, I was like, I remember being in the back and I was like, oh, we only sold t- 60 tickets. And he would be shaking me like, James, you don't understand. A couple of years from now, there are going to be thousands of people coming to these events. And I never believed him at the time. I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. And then it was hundreds. And then suddenly it's thousands. And then, you know, to me, I can just remember him shaking me when there were 60 people. He was like, mate, you do this, it's fine. And then people see us now and they go, oh, you boys are confident on stage. I was like, well, yeah. You've, you've like, done the reps, man. You've done yeah. the reps in this you've game. But we're still doing the reps. Yeah. So like, even tomorrow, there's like, when we're talking about on the way here and I'm like, and initially, like the first one, I didn't even realise I was even involved. And I, di- I didn't even think of it as, you know what, I, I add something to the show or whatever. But now I see value in myself more. So when I'm there, I feel like I'm a part of this show. People yeah, are here to see me as well. Yeah, do you know what yeah. I mean? Well, they, 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 are, they are. They are here to see and that's, you Yeah. Well. And that's what confidence, when you step on stage and however long you talk for is great. And when things get bigger, every day you grow and you keep doing reps which is one of the biggest problems. People are not constantly Willing testing to do it. themselves. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, tomorrow's another test. It's, it's, it's going to be Smith's first tour when he's not having a drink. That's going to be different. It's going to be my first tour where there's that many people in Australia and it's more reps in a different scenario and constantly challenging yourself. The reason we were tired at breakfast is I have been ripping the fuck out of Duran yeah. the whole way here being a perfectionist. We do it to each other. So we're going through what we're saying Yeah, and I will not accept anything less than perfect and he needs it and he likes it I love, I love it both because yeah. you, do Cause you know other. that's what you expect from each other you know yeah. the road between Brisbane and Gold Coast yeah, 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 every time M1. he said um I beeped he beeps, yeah. yeah. other cars get him real pissed off and he was like uh, beep yeah. and I was like mate I was like stop saying um and yeah. he doesn't say it when he's on stage but he says it in the car Yeah. and if I can iron out his creases in the car he's it's like training altitude I'm making shit real hard for him the other day walking in a park I'm like boom go and he's like, yeah. what? I'm like, camera in his face, fucking go. And yeah. like, we're, yeah, yeah. And we're it switches holding- you on, doesn't it? It switches like randomly. We but, would, yeah. but I love, I love how, I love how like, now you, you're both like clear headed, you're not drinking at all. Like, you can see that you're both vibing at a different level as well. Bub, you know what? I, I, I'm not like, it's really fun because I like being tested and I like to be around people that I'm being tested by. Smith's really good at talking. He's better than me. He's done more reps. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I like being around her. I might be better at different things, but when he's grilling me, I'm like, yes, you know why he can grill me? Because he's done more than me, and I respect that. Do you know yeah, what I mean? No, there's no, no, thought, there's yeah. no, there's no ego there. Yeah, I could turn around, and go, don't say that to me, bro. I could, oh, oh. no. Yeah. And again, that's what you do. You is uh, <laughs> me and Alima that have that group in it, like Bershman gang, Abundance gang. <laughs> he's you know a funny I mean? guy. Bro. Yeah, yeah. He's we're a just funny constantly guy. testing each other. I want to get him on the podcast. Yeah, he'll get probably him. come on. The, the beautiful thing as well is what we're actually trying to do is bring each other to each other's level, so that we have to grow. Because if Duran Duran's given me a lot of secrets in my editing, he's like, do this, do this, do this, do this, and then if my editing gets the level of his, he has to grow. Or yeah, he runs yeah, the yeah, risk. Yeah, yeah. It's exactly that. Yeah, and, and you like, can't out edit him. Otherwise, he feels a bit fucking. He's like, I'm is, up my game. Doing so much better at communicating to people. So then, when I have the opportunity, I have to communicate the best I can. <laughs> yeah, or he will do it. And so yeah. we're at the restaurant and there's an opportunity to be cheeky. I have to be cheeky before him to show yeah. him I'm getting more I'm cheeky. I'm so glad you see that, bro. Because, and, I, and I know he's seen that, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I love it because he's yeah. doing the same with me. Yeah. Smith might say something, I'll be like, what if you add, say this? This might be a bit funnier if you uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. interact with that person. He's yeah. like, yes, and bang. Yeah, and Smith, you, add you should call her sugar tits. It. Yeah, or whatever. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And I think people need to realise more that working together with uh, people that have similar mindsets to you is always going to take you just further. Do you know what I mean? And I, I think I wake up most days thinking that if I snooze, one day I'll wake up and during social media presence will be ahead of mine. And I love that feeling. I love the feel. You know when you're running it and someone's will, yeah, behind yeah, yeah, you? Will. Yeah. You know someone's behind you? He's He's got a tan, bro. <laughs> and he's got 70 million bro, people in Turkey who aren't speaking yeah, of Turkish. exactly. But once they find out about him in Istanbul, he's got 14.4 million followers, bro. I know. I know. And they're just waiting there. They just don't know him yet. Guess what, Frankie? I like the pressure. Yeah. I like yeah. it. I like yeah, it. I know, I know for a fact. I know for a fact. This is why you're learning Turkish, though. I yeah. know it. It's <laughs> sure, true. bro. Yeah. It's just like, imagine if he gets to Istanbul before you. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> but like, it's, it's one of those things and, it's, and I'm like, yesterday, for example, 
I had a nap in it. I was tired. I had a few drinks. He let you before. sleep long. He let me sleep, and he was he was editing content. And I woke up, and he's in a jolly mood. In my head, I'm thinking, "You cunt! I'm gonna get you back." But like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in like a not. But, in but, a, but the thing is, you 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 can now carry on two hours past when when he's fucking waning and his eyes are bleeding. You know bro, I mean? and and it's constant that which is yeah. it's great when we're together, and then when we're apart, it's you're it's still hustling. It's yeah, the same. There's, there's something. There's something not right about you two on social media when you're apart. But you know what? We both thrive in both environments. Yes. Yeah. yeah Differently. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah. But from an outsider looking in, I'm like, it's not right. We you know? we actually like both. We yeah. don't. It was. Too I think. Long you, I think. You, I think you need. I think you need a, like a month off, like every yeah, now yeah, and no, again. No, it's good. So like maybe like you know three months a year, but like nine months a year, it works. It bangs. But the sick thing is when you have those moments and you come back and you say doing something where we go away yeah, or yeah, whatever, yeah. because it's hard to travel with most people, but say with me and Smith, we do similar stuff and similar mindset. It's easy. You can just do your own thing whilst being together sort of thing. Come back from like a, say a long period with that, but how about this? Did you know this? And he'll be like, I'm like is that a new yes. camera? Is that yeah, a new yeah, camera? Yeah, yeah, like, and then he comes, I'm like, this is my yeah, new podcast. And it's just, but yeah. when, when we were apart and I see his new editing stuff, it's like training day. I'm like, oh, you sons of bitches. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you've got to do this to me. Yeah, because he come back from London. He'll come back with loads of new skills, man. Yeah. yeah. And plus, he's plus you don't get to see him for two weeks because he's sat in quarantine. But, but on the but other I, side of the coin, he came out here for your tour and he's sitting in quarantine for two weeks but to, but to, 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 to put his life on the line to, to come to these shows. That's pretty fucking good if you ask me. Yeah, man. Like uh, you got quarantine you, was fun, yeah. Was but good. mate, but mate, you blew up in quarantine. To be fair, yeah, it was good. It was good, man. Like you were pumping out like seventeen TikToks a day. Rather gained like forty, just over 40,000 40, followers in two weeks was on bad. all platforms. Yeah, no, just on Insta, just on Insta. Yeah, it was fucking mental. Hell, yeah, it was just fucking went off. Mate, yeah, I'm good. buzzed for you, lads. Before we leave this podcast today, because I know you got loads of shit to do, and you got to practice the second half. Yeah. The plus, plus, you need to- another toilet break. Yeah. But like, people people are gonna want your fucking one golden nugget each, right? That you can drop if you if you could if if you're checking out tomorrow, yeah, and you yeah. just got to drop one piece each, and yeah. and whoever wants to go first, you feel free, just drop that so that it's in. I want this to hit people's ears at the right fucking time. Do you want, you, do you want to go first? It sounds it sounds like really boring. But, but no, it, it, people need to hear it. And if you if you think people need to fucking hear it, then this is what I want you to drop. There's going to be habits, like simple habits. That if you repeat for long enough, they will work. There's there's no way that they won't work. And for me, it was the emails. Sounds like such an unsexy subject. When I started writing them, I I, I knew that I invest half an hour into this, bit like an interest savings account. I put half an hour into this a day. One day it will it will pay. And ten months. I love reminding people 10 months of writing an email every day before I made a sale. Now I'm, I'm annoyed if I don't make 100 sales from an email. But everyone sees now. I suppose the golden nugget to that kind of process orientated side of things is my nugget for you is people who are outworking you will never show you how hard they're working. Ever. So all those motherfuckers outworking you they're not lucky. They're just not showing you what they're doing. And we don't either. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 People don't see half the shit you do. They only see what you post. Yeah. Like you've posted twice, I think, in this apartment, but they haven't seen the other three hours that you've been in the apartment, right? Exactly. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. So that's, that, that's I, lo- I love that. And we, and we thrive off that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We like, yeah, we like yeah, to make yeah, it look yeah. easy as well. Because yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> when people want to dip their toe, yeah. it's a little bit too hot. Yeah. For me, I think it's going to be along the le- same lines. And I think it is the most powerful thing. I think this is the most powerful thing. And what people lack the most is consistency over anything, like Smith touched on. And people, um, you got to embrace the struggle. So you can appreciate when like good things come. And without that element of struggle, there's no growth. And without consistency, there's not going to be any growth either. So those are the two things I would say. Embrace the struggle uh, because you appreciate things well after. And consistency is king over any fucking talent or anything. That's what I've learned over the last Four yeah. years. I can't and even I, fucking I, spell, bro. Now I'm a dog. And, I, and I, te- I tell you, I tell you, the follow up podcast that I'd love you guys to do if you're ever willing to do it with me is I want to do a full B two B podcast because I think it'd be like seriously wild. Yeah, we can do that. You're gonna have to talk to Luke, brother. You have to talk to management. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we need to, to have yeah. some good call to actions in it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah sure. but we'll, we'll we'll plan it a bit more.
boys I just wanted to put down a chat with you today I think it's been fucking thank blissful you, yeah. for me mate thank you so much Jimmy thank you sir thank so, you thank you big, 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 big D big D <laughs> I'm really talking to these crystals yeah, 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 the second yeah, 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 yeah. I've got Tim Tams I've got peanut butter uh, what, what are they Oreos, I got, I got oh, crisps, snap. I got Sick. everything stacked out. If you, if you, if you're, if you're listening to this on audio, go watch it on YouTube. It's a better experience. But anyway, lads, thank you so much. I'm going to drop all your links and everything in, in the, uh, in the, yeah. You boy, you're doing it. You're I want, I want drop, to. drop all the links. Uh, Dear and Cartel on Instagram <laughs> and James Smith PT. Thanks, lads, for uh, at least concentrating for five minutes. <laughs> Cheers, mate. And uh, this is us out. Give us a like on social, man. Don't forget to subscribe to the Frankie Lee Podcast.